everyone, and we are live here with the, it's kind of hard to think about it, it's the 15th episode of uh, Game Session. I didn't realize we were that far along, but I'm your host, Jose, or the Seth Rukage. Um, just at the top of the show, I want to go ahead and remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe on all the socials over here on Twitch. You can follow for free. Uh, YouTube, you can subscribe to get... Um, to get the full podcast episodes as well as individual cut up ones. We're live here on Sundays at 6 30 PM PST on Twitch. And we're also available on podcast services and everyone's ads are on screen or in the description below. Uh, how is everyone doing today? Good. Pretty good. Could be better. Could be worse though, too. That, that is always true. I am glad. I'm glad it's not worse. (laughs) <laughs> I ate a lot of pasta before the show tonight. Well, not a lot, munch, but munch, a decent munch. amount. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. So, for audio listeners, it's it's obviously me. We have Sarah. Hello. See, it's always a fifty fifty chance if I if you're if we're going to get a wave or a audible hello. But I this time it was both. So I got both this time. It's a buy so, one. G- you know, <laughs> I, I, give, I give the people what they want, which is both. It, so it, now, now they're going to get both. It's a buy one, get one. Uh, also joined by Mesa. Hello. <laughs> and Blaine. Hi, I'm stretching, but how you doing? <clears throat> doing good. All right, so let's just go ahead and jump into some of the news. We actually have a lot of it. I know for when we get into the what we've been playing part of the show, I don't personally have that much just because I've mostly been uh, building furniture and putting together this new room that I'm in. Uh, So, yeah, not much on my end in that regard, but we'll go ahead and jump into the news. Uh, For the top of the show, um, I don't know if you guys have played it. I would highly recommend you do. But um, the official Twitter account for Ubisoft's Rabbids has changed their at from Rabbids official to at Mario Rabbids, which would seemingly point to them kind of poison themselves for a sequel to 2017's Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle, which is still one of the best fucking games on the Nintendo Switch. And I think I think it's sold pretty well, but I, it still feels like a lot of people slept on it. Does that excite any of you? Uh, I did not play me. that, so I can't say anything. <laughs> I played it for about Sarah. two hours, and I had a blast. So yeah, uh, it, it'll be good reason for force me to go back. <laughs> I haven't played it. Like I picked it up on sale, the Gold Edition. I played, I think, the first two or three or four maps. Really, really loved it. Have not gone back to it. Not, not like out of like not wanting to play it. Just honestly, I just keep forgetting. Same. Wait, you got the Gold Edition, right? Yeah, so it's it, all it, DLC or whatever. It has the Donkey Kong DLC. It's even better than the base game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to play it, dude. Got to rep the I Kongs. Will. Believe me, I, I will. I just remember, was it the director who was at E3 who, when Mia Moto like complimented him, the dude like very sweetly started like crying. Yes. I believe it's uh, David uh, Soliani. Yeah, and he was, and like he was, he was just like so like proud, and I was like so happy for him. Like I, I didn't even touch that game, but I just see that video clip some sometimes, and I'm like, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> it's, it's just such a fucking good game. Actually, you know what? Give me once. Oh, Jose. do you have the statue? I remember that I statue. Do not, I but I do game. have a little rabbit right here. I like the rabbits. I the rabbit's playing, terrifying. Oh, rabbit's rabbit. it, does, mm-hmm. it makes sounds too. Oh no! It makes noises. I hate it. <laughs> no, that's good. That's the good shit. The rabbits like <laughs> freak me out, and I don't know if it's this like primal instinct of where I just want to punt them, but I really mm-hmm. just want to just like punt no. them across the no, room. They're good. Like just like Maybe- first first viewing, I just want to connect my foot w- with its giant skull maybe it's because <laughs> i grew up on like slapstick humor or whatever but the rabbits like even the little uh, i think it's like nickelodeon show they did it's just super fucking up my alley so anything with them i I'm forgot all bored with. they did it mm-hmm. the show didn't come first right raving rabbits the no raving rabbits yeah it was a uh, rayman they- spinoff yeah and, it was yeah. like it was like a mario party-esque kind of thing or not even mario party it was like what it was like almost like a WarioWare situation. It was sort of. Yeah, there, there, there was two of those, and then they started getting their own games. Mm-hmm. Then the TV show, and then Mario plus Rabbids, which is probably the best thing that's ever come out of it. I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I know, um, I mean, this like, this is like a Game. fact, I guess, that everybody knows, but like, um, the soundtrack really stood out to me because I was just like, damn, this is probably it's, a. This it's is Grant a really Kirkhope is straight up That's fucking Banjo Kazooie. Yep. Mm-hmm. I was, I was about to say, don't forget the Rabbids Connect game. <laughs> oh, fuck. Was there one of those? Yes, there was. Oh, shit. I there never had a Connect. Connect game. There's only one Connect game that I know of and remember the swear I've still played. Well, I played the demo for it. I played the demo. For it. I played it, and and, and and I did use Connect with it, and it was fucking weird. I respect the shit out of a man who decides I'm gonna name my game D4, aka Dark Dream. I think you cut out for a second. Oh, so I said I respect the hell out of a man who calls his game D4. Dark dreams don't die. <sighs> don't make me sad. I know. I know. What Rest in peace, the Connect. Now what it's happened to little Peggy? films. I don't know. I didn't even beat it. I played the demo, but like, it, he had health problems, man. And then the fucking company was like, well, we mm-hmm. still own the rights, and uh, it's such a fucked up situation. Yeah. I was really. Ho- I never. I never did get to play uh, um, uh, uh, Deadly Premonition 2. I would really hope there was going to be like a book called like G4. <laughs> it's like green <laughs> greens gro- grow oh <laughs> and you'll find out what happened to little Peggy. I think, uh, uh, I think even aside wait, from that, some of the tra- was that the woman who thought that she was a cat? No. That, that was, that, that was, that was no, that was D4. That no, was, like was I like know that was D4, was, but I can't oh, remember who just little remember. Peggy is. I, oh, that was the, the, the main character's um uh uh like girlfriend that went missing. Oh, I just remember. Okay. I just I, yeah, remember I there is. I just remember there is in um D four. Sorry, in uh, in Deadly Premonition two. Is that um, yeah? You literally play the the in the beginning of the game. You end up you you're in an apartment comp the same apartment complex of D four, and oh you're like God, an apartment above it. And he says like, yeah, downstairs there's this. There's this detective. Hopefully, his story will conclude soon. I Man. just remembered it. I just oh remembered God. it. Yeah. I do not spoil me. And uh, I mean, aside from things that I want to judge on my own time with Deadly Commission Two, um, first fifteen I, minutes. I still no no I know. I'm just saying mm. in general. Like I am excited to play that after I f- refinish uh, one again. Did they ever fix the frame rate shit, or is it still I like think, complete? I don't think they fixed it. I don't think they fixed it all the way. I know that they dropped a bunch of patches on it. But I don't believe they fixed it all the way, which kind of Can I sucks. at least get 20 frames? Is like a bare minimum? The highest you're going to get is like 23, my dude. You're, you're not even going to get a base number. <laughs> you're just going to get 23. Didn't um, like see, Ocarina of Time run at like fucking 18 frames, but it still looked okay? Well, that was the time. That sounds about right. Time. Yeah. I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real because every time y'all start talking about like this frames versus that frames and this or that, my brain's just like, does it look okay? Cool. Whatever. I don't care. No, not, I mean, you, I do the same thing. Frames doesn't matter to Mace, me. Mesa, he, have you joined the 144 hertz family? Oh, yeah, I, 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 bought a, I bought a monitor, like a 144 hertz monitor. Like It is a... Cool. Cool. I bought my TV because it could do 120 hertz. Yeah, same. I don't want that, to look at like a window. 40, I want it, it to is, be a fucking projection. You, you only see that because you haven't seen it. It is beautiful, my friend. I, well, I it is so motion beautiful. motion smoothing on a movie. I don't and, want and, and, Our motion smoothing is artificial. It's not native that's oh why it looks goodness. bad anyway <laughs> that's a whole other topic the frame rate wars yeah, uh, yeah for me I, can uh, i have my own can i have my own corner to, to discuss shadows <laughs> shadows <of the> game, <laughs> please, <No>. please? Yeah. <laughs> no. can i have my five minutes just to cry please we can uh, do we can do our own special episode on uh, talk about shadows donor. and i talk about killer seven hell yeah let's do it i'm down <laughs> All right, so we might. Um, I, I think I'll probably defer uh, to Sarah. I, I would have deferred to Court. Fucking rabid. Um, <laughs> I would I would have deferred to Corey also if he was here since he's played it. Um, since since it is kind of tied, but I wanted to pose a topic to everyone here. How in depth do content warnings need to be for games, or I I guess like even media in general, like how much of a warning do they need so so when i pose this question this question on twitter and i'll i can pull up the poll answers um 
so, so to me, there's three there's three kind of options for it. Uh, a being a general statement that says that there's material that players may find triggering. Uh, B specifically stating what material occurs. So if there is a suicide scene, specifically say a suicide happens on screen or it's inferred or anything like that. Or option C, where it is option A, but it allows for like maybe like a drop down menu that shows you that shows you option B. Um, so I'll just open the floor to, I guess I'll go to Sarah first since you're the one that's played the medium. And I, uh, so if you want to go into your thoughts on the game here, you can, otherwise we can compartmentalize and you can talk about, uh, strictly the, like the gamic elements later on when we talk about what we've been playing, but I'll defer to you. Hello. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I did start playing the medium when the game released on Thursday. Uh, if in game time is to be allowed it, I'm around two and a half hours in. So I'm not exactly that far yet, but uh, it's a Silent Hill clone. Um, going in, I just was basically, and this was before everything about the ending came out, which I'll discuss later. Um, but going in, I literally was just telling myself, I don't know when we're getting a next Silent Hill game. So I'm just going to enjoy this as if it was a Silent Hill game because I'm so goddamn thirsty for another Silent Hill game at this point. I'll just take whatever I can get. Um, it's a co- it's a Silent Hill copy all the way down to famed composer Akira Yamaoka and Mary Mary Ellen McLennan, I think is her last name. Mary the Elizabeth woman- McLennan. Thank you. Uh, the woman who's done the vocals for all the Silent Hills uh, m- music also does the vocals for the medium music too. Uh, it's 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 a Silent Hill clone. Uh, it's a lot of mishmashed ideas thrown together. Uh, and, uh, at first I just kind of was okay with it, but then after, um, realizing just, and Blaine brought this to my attention after I'd forgotten about it and a couple other people on Twitter, mostly Bob Vids, who's a essay, essay person, essayist. Video I don't know. Essayist. What I don't know. I don't know what the word mm-hmm. Kind of yeah. journalist. I don't know if he I, it calls his work journalism, but he's done, I think uh, he's done things you mm-hmm. could call that. Go on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he made a video a while ago, actually, when the medium was first uh, revealed that shows just how much, I don't want to say anything if anyone from that team is listening, but I don't care. Just how plagiaristic Bloober team is with a lot of their projects, with almost all of their projects. And once I remembered that video and continued playing the medium, yeah, I st- I went from thinking this is a Silent Hill clone to 100%. This is literally them just wanting to make a Silent Hill game and changing everything that would have made it a Silent Hill game. Are there specific elements that kind of make the differentiation between uh, pastiche or homage where it's just basically a carbon copy? Are, are there like specific uh, elements that stand out to you that kind of push that, that gap? A st- spirit world in place of what could have just been silent hill like i feel like they could have just named the spirit world silent hill and named the medium silent hill and no one could have been able to tell a difference i don't want like, to sound like um no sorry, no go it. ahead no I no want to sound go ahead. like i'm trying to like squash the conversation but um would it be do you think it would be better if we go just more back into the content more conversation since that's yes started? i was actually Circle back like, at the game when we talk about what we're playing Yeah, I was actually leading into that a a, a, a tiny bit because uh, (laughs) as if what Blaine was was saying, I don't remember Silent Hill having content warnings. Maybe they did and I just didn't pay attention. I would Uh, also say that's just a product of the time. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because like Resident Evil had the crazy like, oh, this game is very violent. and It's like, no shit. (laughs) Well, I mean, I have I that actually plays right into how what I was going to say about this. So did you want to Go on, yeah. Sarah, or... So, really, okay. really quick, I sent it to Jose, and we were talking about this a couple days ago. Uh, when you boot up the medium, you obviously have your, like, screens that say the name of the developers and epilepsy warning and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, on the same page as the epilepsy warning, at the bottom of the screen, there's something that says trigger warning. And quote for quote, it says, the medium was designed and developed by a diverse team of various beliefs, political views, and I- ID- ideologies. Jeez. It touches upon highly sensitive subjects with the intent of treating them seriously. Despite this, some players may find certain scenes and themes triggering. Now, keep in mind that that doesn't go into any details whatsoever. 
and a, a normal person might say it's because they didn't want to spoil anything so they're just letting you know that hey this game is going to delve into like pretty serious stuff and just like letting you know uh but you can also argue that content warnings have happened in recent games before and something like which is something completely different i'm not comparing it to the medium i'm comparing how you how it used its content warning to tell me why who had a separate website made to explain the content in every single one of the episodes for people who needed to know what that episode was going to tackle and when it was going to be tackled but you right. but like that was completely optional you didn't have to go and look at that but they put that mm -hmm. there because they knew that their game was going to touch on heavy subjects i it's it's so weird i consider the word triggering kind of like a uh what's blaine you and i talked talked about this <laughs> i consider the word triggering like not like a I, th I think we were discussing it the other day where trigger warning seems like the informal, like almost yes, Tumblr yes, way yes. of approaching Thank it, you. whereas caution advisory mm -hmm. and caution yeah. warnings are more. Um, I, uh, I don't want to use the method. word trigger warning because I consider it informal as hell. But well, I, what they I got did one thing to say about that. That's not. I'm not saying this to you, but you personally. That's kind of dangerous because the whole purpose of the term trigger warning wasn't just like a Tumblr informal thing. It was mm -hmm. literally. It is the terminology for if you have like a PTSD trigger and use to that. Mm -hmm. So if anything, I would say use it when it's applicable. Just don't use it. it like, instead of saying, I don't use it because it um, seems too informal, I would say, I don't want to use it for this specific instance because this is an informal instance. And I just want to say like a content warning. Okay. I save it for something that is a actual, because it literally comes from psychological trigger. That's what the I, term comes I from. I think that's fair that it's not a hundred percent like a semantical argument. Like there is a bit of a distinction there. Yeah. There's a history. Thank you. Um, but, but um, but what what tell me why I did was extremely smart because for people who needed to know the exact content that the game was going to go over, the one thing that that uh, that that website did, which I actually went to check it out myself when they had oh, announced it. I remember it, it now that you okay, yeah, I yes, know exactly what you're talking about. It doesn't about. go into context, which which means it doesn't spoil stuff. It doesn't go into context, but it explains everything that happens in the episode that might be triggering for some for some people mm -hmm. it doesn't go into the context so that you could still play the game and still not be spoiled but it does go into what is in there what they did with the medium is so vague and so like it doesn't mm -hmm. even go into like oh this game deals with suicidal tendencies which is not a spoiler people are talking about this right 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 now this 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 game talks heavily about the subject of death this game talks heavily about the subject of helping people move on like it is it's so vague that even when i read that when it showed up on the screen my reaction was like hmm? i originally i thought they were just copying off of silent hill and what resident evil did back in the 90s i was about to say it sounds like that kind of at the time, valid, maybe now not as good idea of what like a content or a trigger. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Because that was also, if I remember correctly, stuff like those warnings were more specifically for the fact, I guess, because they didn't want an AO. So they had to be like, oh, warning, this isn't Co that or Covering whatever. their legal bases or whatever. Exactly. So yeah. Say, like, like, oh. Before reading about what the game covers, I, I thought of that as just, oh, this is them trying to be like an old school horror game. But like, make it modern day by. But the why would they put the whole this this game was made by people with different ideologies and different beliefs in the same sentence as this game has triggering content in it? I thought that was kind of weird. I kind of wanted to. Um, I kind of want to preface this with. Uh, I think obviously you guys know what my position is. So when I did put the poll out with options A, B, and C, mine was obviously C. I think every game should have that warning with the option to see what it is um, without so necessarily saying why does basically but not without the um additional website i, I want it baked into the game like hey if mm -hmm. you want to see this drop down menu press this button there you go but mm -hmm. on the same token um i went into uh, um i went to doki doki uh, literature club completely blind i saw the content warning and this, I, I would say this actually goes towards your argument sarah where a general content warning does not properly prepare you for what might actually be in there i don't remember what the exact uh content warning in doki doki was 
But when I got to uh, the scene in Doki Doki, I was like, what the fucking fuck is this shit? Like, like, I, I mean, I've I've been there like suicides are very near and dear to me, but it didn't get to me in a way that would have gone to other people. Yeah, but, um, I think there's something to be said. It, if, if someone knows that they can handle such material, I, I think it'd be preferable for people to go in with the maximum impact of surprise. But that being said, it kind of does go back to my original point of that information needs to be made available for people that do require this. And I want well, it in game, not not on a separate website. And I think when Doki Doki released, that was back when people were just slowly starting to use Steam's tagging system. Now you jokingly see like Dark Souls with like anime cat girl game on it. But but at the time, people were just starting to use that. And I and I think people, I mean, me included, everyone played Doki Doki around the same time so that we knew we like wouldn't get stuff spoiled for us. So we didn't exactly know going in what we were going into. But now I think if you look at the game on Steam, people have tagged it as like what is in it to like show show people now and of course i'm not making excuses for it i definitely think that they should have let you know going in i just think hell at least people have been kind enough to use steam's tagging system to let people know Mm -hmm. so let them know can i use that as a springboard to go Go ahead what i want to say all right so i i agree with pretty much all of what y'all have said um I haven't played Doki Doki Panic. Doki Doki, Doki, Doki Panic. I haven't played Doki Doki, 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 Doki <laughs> Literature. Shut up. It's the same almost. It's, it's almost okay. I, I had to think about it. She was like, wait, Doki Do- Literature Club. Literature Club. Um, I have not played Doki Doki Literature Club. I do plan on playing it. Um, I know that I know that it's not just a hard swerve into psychological horror, but it's also a, one of those very, very like directly meta horror games. And I'm, I'm down for that. Um, Which 100%. And, Meta. And I prepared what myself for that. I, I've <laughs> seen the video about the Twitch stream. I was like, "That is brilliant. Pro- that is brilliant programming." Whoever fucking figured that out and like thought yeah, oh, we should actually put this in. Uh, um, a guy named Dan Salvato. I think there was a couple other programmers with him, but he was the head guy on it. Interesting. Um, but that being said, um, I don't know the content warning for that one. Um, I played a game recently called Detention. Uh, I, I think. Well, I mean, I've been telling. I think all of. Or at least all of y'all have seen me on Twitter talking about I've it. I've been watching the TV show on Netflix about it. <laughs> I'm going to after <laughs> I get the, the after I, I get the quote unquote good ending, which I f- fucked up because I didn't get all the files my second first time through. Um, I am going to actually the watch really that. Good, by the way, if I've heard it's really it. good. It's really good. <laughs> um, but that but that being said, I just want to read the. Uh, there's two warnings when you start detention from Buddha. There's the events, characters, and organizations depicted in this game, fortunately, are fictitious. Any similarity to actual persons living or dead, locales, or actual historical events or is purely coincidental. That's your typical, like, you know, we have to say this because legal, so no one sues us. But also, it is about a specific period of history in uh, Taiwan, the White Terror period. And um, I believe it's in the 1960s, if I remember correctly, or at least the most of the game is. Um, and the content warning you get... Which I actually, I like the way it's laid out just from like a typo- ty- uh, typographical to that perspective. But it says, some parts of this game may be considered violent or cruel. This game contains scenes of explicit violence and gore, not appropriate for people with heart dis- diseases. Um, I, know, I know that seems to basically fall under the same umbrella as like, like the one we read for the medium. And one of the more holdovers from like the 90s and thousands. Um, but that being said... I feel like this is kind of a gray area still as far as like how much you are should be required to have versus how much um, you can choose to have there. I don't really know what the answer is for that. Um, I probably would agree with something like Jose said where like have the combination of have the extra info and have it be like a drop down menu. But I also have another position on that. When I read the tell me why, because I figured I, if I was going to play that game, I wasn't going to play it for a while, and I cared more about seeing what these details were and finding out, like, you know, is the trans character played by trans man? Is it a trans um, sorrow story, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And none of the things were really, like Sarah said, there's not really a context to them. None of them are really spoilers. They're just kind of vague oh. things, and I'm going to drop... Jose's going to laugh when I say this. I'm going to drop one of my patented hot takes. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, let's if go. If your story... 
is going to be so detriment is going to be det- really 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 hampered by just giving a very broad general like this deals with x themes kind of thing unless you're like david lynch and that's like your whole thing is just like weaving this giant thing of like misdirection perception uh, toying with ideas of what the art can a medium can be i didn't make that pun on purpose um i don't really I, if your story can't work with those things also said maybe it's just not that good a story i hate to say this like yeah the 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 while yeah the thing like the the content warnings are silent hill one two and three all being kind of different varying degrees of like one being like violence and disturbing imagery violence and disturbing imagery i think three was the one that was violence and cruel imagery specifically well even two has like heavily implied rape in it too no it does Mm -hmm. but that's the thing it's like i feel like if you saw a disclaimer at the beginning saying like um this game deals with themes of of like of suicide suicidal thoughts uh sexual assault and child abuse like i don't think that would suddenly make everyone go like oh no the game is spoiled for me and the story is i could probably even tell someone i mean i'm not really saying a spoiler but like i could probably even tell someone like man james is kind of a piece of shit and leave it at that and that wouldn't like Sorry, James Defense Squad, you're wrong. Um, <laughs> that, that they exist, they exist. No. It's weird. Um, I hate it. I don't even know. want to know. The I whole hate thing it. to realize like how terrible the person he is. I know, I know, I know. But, <laughs> yeah. That's what part of Silent Hill Two is. But, but realize that's where I sit. How terrible he is. Sorry. That, that, no, Sorry you're fine. That's that's where oh, I God, sit okay. though. Is I feel like your story should be able to carry its own weight, and also even and like and again, I'm not and th- and I know that the detention, as much as I've been mm-hmm. praising it, doesn't fit what we just said. But I also feel like it also depends on how you handle these themes. And again, mm-hmm. not getting into spoilers for detention. It's a very short game. Like it's literally like se- what well, like six, seven, eight hours maybe if you take your time. It's great. Please go buy it full price or on sale what just buy it it's great um and and help us maybe get a localization of devotion again instead of uh or rather a re-release because after that bullshit but um where was i going with this oh um they, the way they handle these themes is very tasteful it's very like they show you just enough to get across the ideas and themes without really hitting you in the face with it which is also something i would say silent hill 2 does um, I, I just have to say real quick, if we're if me and Sarah are smiling, it's because John's doing some some. Uh, is he still going ham on Twitter? No, he's going uh, ham in our chat. Yeah, he's, he's going ham in our chat. <laughs> Why is he? Wait a minute. Why is he going ham in our chat? John, are you listening to me right now? Yes. He's. Uh, I don't see him. Various elite ways of spelling games, and I, and the last thing we put in. is uh, oh, in the Twitch chat. I can't yeah. see that because my computer won't <laughs> allow we just, me. But we just we just kind of jumped in, so we are uh, totally listening. Good. We promise, but we're just it's joining in on the. It's time. all good. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm not laughing at the topic matter. It's, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that <laughs> Twitch chat in a second and really give him what for. But um, um well, oh, well, I had a point here. I had a point here. I can't find it. I had a point here. Um, I would say that like. I would say that the Silent Hill, that's, uh, for example, Silent Hill 2 um, actually does do a good enough job of not hitting you over the head with it and being super blatant with it so that maybe a more general temp trigger warning or content warning mm-hmm. is okay. Um, something like the medium from what, and Sarah can circle back to this uh, in a bit, but I, I'm just briefly touching on from what I have heard, the medium is not something that handles something with nuance and with care. It's something that does, I mean, John, actually, if you're in chat, I would say, from what I've heard, it handles things about as well as that one indie game you played where it was like, just press button to commit suicide. And I don't think that's okay, whether it's a, like, indie studio that's one person or indie studio owned by Microsoft and putting shit out there. Um, they're, like... And someone out there is going to be like, but but Blaine, doesn't Silent Hill 2 have, like, really gratuitous depictions of rape? And I'm actually going to say to you, it actually doesn't. It doesn't, you know. It, it is... does not. There's a common misconception that all of us probably believed at one point that the scene in which Pyramid Head is jamming. Some I know what you're talking insane. about. Yes, I'm going to go into. I'm going to go into it. Uh, um, spoilers for Silent Hill Two. It's like 20 fucking years old, guys. Oh, uh, it's time. like, and it's like, and it's like an hour into the game. I don't care. Um, and, it's, and it's an iconic scene. He, Pyramid Head is shoving some mannequins into a sink while James watches scared from a closet and he shoots at Pyramid Head to like kind of get him to go away and you know nothing happens. 
A lot of people have said that this is a rape scene. It's been known through, like, almost quote unquote officially that it's a rape scene. Uh, Semi recently, either in the last year and a half or maybe two years, I I don't know, Masahiro Ito, the art director and creature designer of that, of two as well as other games, but I don't remember exactly his work, his detail of work in each game. Um, He specified that if someone wants to view that, as a scene of sexual assault, he can't exactly tell them not to, but that was never in his mind when he was designing the scene. From what I remember of his, because I some of it maybe I had to use Google Translate, and some of it also just he. I mean, no, I'm no no shade on the man. Just he was speaking in a little bit of broken English, but um, he was saying how if anything, it seemed more like Pyramid Head was trying to get rid of all the bad thoughts and get them out. That Pyramid Head's like less of a punisher in that scene and more of like a cleaner. And my, in my perception, my opinion, I took that as so basically Pyramid Head, the literal figure, is trying to pu- purify James's memory so he doesn't have to think about all these horrible things, whether that he's him cheating on his wife or, against spoiler alert for a fucking 20-year-old game, That's... or, um, or, or being about... just not supportive of his wife and only really wanting her for sexual purposes and being That's... frustrated with that. That's a beautiful new context. Yeah, I didn't even really... think of that. I didn't even know that. Yeah really really changes the context of that last fight where you fight the two pyramid heads mm-hmm. um that's really and good why they keep killing maria like over thanks and over sir again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh I god you, once I again think you really uh, years old. thank you for spearheading that discussion blind <laughs> yeah because i mean that's because yeah. because we, well, we can all say the same thing of like we can just say well yeah content warning is good and leave it at that but i mean i i i'm reminded mm-hmm. i'm sorry this is the last semi-tangent i'm reminded of when neil gaiman titled a book trigger warning and a lot of people got mad at him and his response was i'm not making fun of the idea of trigger warnings and content warnings i am as a writer and author trying to ask the question when is and isn't appropriate a time and what is what does it call for and i think it's a discussion we can have as adults and just ask like you know what requires it what doesn't he wasn't making mm-hmm. fun of people for using mm-hmm. it he wasn't mocking the idea of it he wasn't saying like don't put he even put like he literally made that the thing and it was a collection of older books that he the older stories that he was actually like maybe i should have put warnings on these books i don't know let's talk about it i think we can mm-hmm. all basically centrally agree that if people want that information prior to engaging with the product they should have access to that information Absolutely. and it's like just just to bring this up as someone who played tell me why and who looked at the uh the uh, content page that they did for it and someone who's playing the medium now but not as like i i i i beat tell me why i've not beaten the medium just need to give that context um what i don't understand how bluebird team could just go in and put that vague of a content warning when they're a part of microsoft the same studio that owns don't uh do as don't nod who did tell me why who did a much better content warning system like i just don't understand how they could have been like oh they did that a lot better we should learn from what they're doing kind of what a lot of sony studios are doing what naughty dog did with their accessibility options because there are Mm -hmm. studios actively learning from from that all blooper team could have done was taken a look at what tell me why and don't nod did because if they're so hell bent on their game handling heavy content, which I'm all here for, I am all for games starting to handle heavy content well, and they're not handling it well, and they didn't word about it well. They're also I, no stranger to lifting ideas, so how come they didn't lift this? Yeah, one? yeah. Hmm. Thanks, I think, thanks, Blade. <laughs> yeah. I think um, maybe just to put a ribbon on it, since we're like thirty minutes in her, um, without going too much into the gaming elements, Sarah, can you or I guess you haven't beaten it, um, but can you go into how nope. specifically the lack of a proper warning and the way it's kind of tackling those themes? How has it actively impacted your enjoyment of the game? Um, I mean, knowing because like it, uh, it's kind of already hinted towards the themes. I don't want to spoil anything, but I found a. So in the game, really quick, there are these things called, uh, I think they're called memory cracks or something like that. In the game, you'll hear whispers in in the background, which is why the game says to wear head, headphones. And you find these items and you search the items, like you circle them and stuff to like try to find this like glowing crack in it. And the items have memories attached to it. And you find this letter and a pill bottle attached that has a memory crack in it. 
Wait, and are it's you this, serious? Yes. That's and, a game mechanic from that fucking Cthulhu detective game I played. The and city. I'm sorry, go on. This, I just can't no, no, it's it. fine. And it's this nurse who is who it's implied that she's reading the letter from one of her patients. And she's like, no, why did you, why did you do it? Why did you do that? Why? And she's like crying. And it's implied that the guy killed him himself. And that's the first act that I've seen of it. It, The mention of suicide has been brought up one more time before that. And it was from the main, the main character where she's like, oh, I thought about ending it once because she... Once again, stolen from other media, she can see ghosts. Her whole power is she helps ghosts pass pass on. Like, she's basically that person that says, hey, you know, you don't need to do this thing any anymore. It's time for you to go. And that's basically her job. And she kind of can't turn it on and off. It happens randomly. So she's brought it up once, and I found that object once. But I haven't seen how people have talked about how the ending uses it yet. So I just know Mm -hmm. going in that this is what the game covers. And I mean, it's affected me in that I'm more looking out for it and how the game handles it more. Like there hasn't been anything that's made me super uncomfortable yet, if that's what you're asking. But I'm still early on, so I don't know if it's going to come in soon. But at the moment... It hasn't really affected me. It's just affected me in this is what I know going in, and this is what the game is going to cover. Sorry, that was very long winded. <laughs> it's all good. But, yeah. Does anyone have any closing thoughts on that? I guess before we eventually wrap back around to the actual game, just in, just in terms of the uh, how it's approaching these elements. Any closing thoughts? Nah. Uh, the only thing I really have to say is in the video, like Sarah had mentioned, um, Bloober teams game history seems to have not has shown about the same level of understanding and care with such themes i mean i played layers of fear one i finished that game really not knowing how i felt about it because it was very clearly trying to do like a commentary on paranoid frenia but it also did it in a way that was like seemed very sensationalist and i i don't know i left with bad feelings and after hearing what sarah has said about like what she's experience so far and what other people have said about the whole game um i am definitely looking back on that with like that was probably even grosser than i really thought just because also i'm not someone who deals with um a mental disorder such as like paranoid schizophrenia with hallucinations mm-hmm. um so say actually, really actually, really quick actually, actually now i think about it so you had brought up um don't nod is a proper example within the greater Microsoft umbrella that uh, Bloober could have taken note from. Uh, Microsoft also owns. What well, is it? Is a Ninja Theory or Ninja? Yes. Uh, oh they, my they, god! They, yes. They, what they, the they fuck? Have Bloober team. Hellblade I'm is like so right. centrally about like is is totally I'm in that wheelhouse. At my camera, looking directly at every single fucking person that works at Bloober team. What the fuck? <laughs> you could have easily. And you would easily like, contact oh, the Ninja really Team. I'm sorry. Because companies do shit like that all the time, like who are owned by the same parent company. And it's like Microsoft is funding them specifically for this reason. They're funding Project Mara and they're funding their like separate production about looking into how games can handle mental health and like mental illness in people. You could have easily just fucking emailed them. You both work for Microsoft now. God, I'm done. I'm going. That would Bye. Require I'm actual angry. work and not just doing a. <laughs> I'm angry. Uh, I think that's good. <laughs> We're mad online about video games, people. Oh shit! I'm angry. Spe- I'm angry. Let, let's let's just keep the uh, may- maybe the anger train rolling. Uh, CD Projekt Red has removed a mod from Cyberpunk 2077 that allowed players to have sex with Keanu Reeves' character Johnny Silverhand. The uh, mod itself simply swapped Johnny's model from the intended character, which I believe was a joy toy, which is a, um, a sex worker within the game. Um, yeah, so, sex- so before we go into like immediate thoughts on that, this comes mm-hmm. within the context of um, there being mods for straight male characters not being able to romance uh, Judy, who's a lesbian one within the game. There's a mod to to allow straight male characters to romance her, which I I, I don't recall if we discussed it on this show live, but uh, that's pretty fucking gross. Turning a lesbian woman into uh, away from who she is as a character away from that just to please 
uh, that demographic is just pretty fucking gross. But what does everyone think about maybe the correlation between that, maybe some of the implications between Johnny specifically being based off a real care, uh, not real care, off a real person, which is Keanu Reeves. Maybe there's some legal mm-hmm. issues there as well. Um, I mean, so- I'm going to assume it's the contract. I'm going to assume that's part of the contract. That they have so- to do a good faith effort in order to, to prevent mods like this from showing up i mean so i no, no no it's fine i'm sorry i kept cutting cutting you off Mm. Uh, i brought this up before we started going live where it's the whole idea of um reader insert fanfic and how people how it's like if you want to write a reader insert fanfic of a character that doesn't exist that's cool go ahead go nuts i've done it i read them i follow people who write them it's great but when you do a reader insert fanfic of an actual human being like an actor and not any of the characters that they play that shit's weird you're not getting their consent mm-hmm. to do that so i get where cd projects coming from it's like oh you're having sex with johnny silverhand but you're also having sex with keanu reeves and that's a little bit weird the only but- the only part i would probably jump into that is is with most games nowadays they are using scans of people's yeah. faces mm-hmm. so the, only, like- the only key differentiation would be that keanu reeves has a big uh, pull to his name like he's like the face of the game and if it's in his contract yeah. like I don't want to be in no uh, he doesn't want to be in sex shit then they're going to pull that yeah and it's like I and it's like I am I, I get it yes I was jokingly kind of like oh well thanks for ruining hold on give me one second thanks for ru- ru- ruining our fun CD project um, it's it's the whole idea of they would take that down incredibly quickly. Apparently it was only up for like a couple of hours. And then the mod creator went, okay, City Project is asking me to to take it down. I'm just going to take it down so I don't get in like legal trouble. But they won't take down the mod that t- turns gay characters straight. I don't understand. Like, it's weird to me. Like, I, 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 I get contracts and get that maybe keanu didn't want didn't want people having sex with him and yes i'm depressed i can't romance johnny i wasn't looking to romance keanu reeves i was looking to romance his character but i understand it but at the same time they like they'll take that down after a couple hours of it being up and give a legit reason as to why but then leave the other one up yeah i I, I, I I think think regardless uh, i was just gonna say real quick uh, regardless of any contracts which i would assume is the uh the reason behind the rush to get this mod out of the way, uh, CD Projekt should have taken the prerogative to do the exact same fucking thing with the Judy mod. Yes, they should have. I think it's a greater symptom of a fact that CD Projekt Red is very clear about who they actually give a shit about. They give a shit about the loudest members of their fan base who care about glitches and care about other things. Well, <laughs> really, no, but we had that discussion two weeks ago. Um, they care about their bread and butter. They care about is Keanu Reeves gonna fucking sue us? Um, think back to when David Cage, when it was found out that um, people mm-hmm. broke into the Beyond Two Souls data and scenes, they were able to find out that they actually used a fully nude body scan of Ellen Page that was actually made with the specific like that. She, I think, if I remember correctly, that was done under the under the assumption that her like genitalia and stuff would not be modeled and like that you know it was just like you know cut off where it was cut off uh, when sh- that. What's I'm up? sorry. So just just a quick elaboration. You you mentioned they'd done a full body scan, or did they just kind of slap her face on a different? They, model? if I remember correctly, it was a body scan. If I'm wrong, then it was that they put her head on an existing model. But the, I'm pretty sure it was a body I scan. I want to say because of the fact. I'm sorry, Mesa, but bef- because of the fact that once this got out, that there were her model was actually in fact nude down to almost everything. She sued David Cage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She or not just David Cage. She sued Quantic Dream. But I'm just saying she started. I'm sorry. Oh, oh no no no. He he he. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot uh, that he changed his pronouns. Apologies for that. Um, he or wait, does he? Elliot. Uh, he. I believe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure it wasn't I'll, just. I'll double a, check. You double check for me. I'm going to use he for now, but just correct me, and I'll apologize again if I'm wrong. Um, uh, he, he they that that's what he has on his Twitter. Awesome. Okay, so he, again, apologies out there, everybody. He said 
He he either seeks fought legal action against David Cage directly or against Quantic Dream. I don't remember which. I just know that there was a hubbub about it because he never agreed to have that in the game. It was done without his knowledge and out his without his approval. That circling back means like you know, I I, I get that that's why that's a thing with uh, Keanu Reeves. I'm sure it's the same thing, but like. Oh, so CD Projekt Red sees that, and they don't want to get in that same trouble that David Cage got in and Quantum Dream got in. But they're totally fine still throwing their LGBTQ fan base to the wind, more or less, with all these other things. Um, and, and I'm just... I have nothing else to say about it. Like, literally, when we started talking about CD Projekt Red, I just picked up this book that I've been reading and started reading it. Because I, I have nothing else to add except for, like, CD Projekt Red sucks. They throw their LGBT fan base to the wind and they will hand they can instantly handle problems that are genuinely like an issue, but then ignore other things as if they're not as important. I think you've basically perfectly distilled it down yeah. to yeah, C D project has a fucking double standard going on. They're fucking in in this case, uh homophobic just straight up. And uh Fuck, I don't, I don't even know what else to say. Like, yes, I, CG Project is just fucked up. There's no two ways around that. Let's see. Did we lose you, Blaine? Are you still there? No, I'm still here. Oh, okay. Mm. I just had nothing else to say. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think we really left much on the table in that regard. I think we cleaned up pretty well. Don't even have to wash the dish. It's just fucking sparkling clean. Um, Did you have any thoughts on it, Mesa? Um... Not really. Um, I remember I know, I guess... pretty, when we did our cyberpunk um, uh, discussion with Dio a while back, you had called um, particular attention to trying to romance River as River a, as a male character as a male V, and the fact so it seems like um, only and um, excuse me. Apparently, this also comes. We were talking about this point. If you try to romance um, uh, Pat. I want to say Padme. Uh, Pan Am. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Pac-Man. I, uh, I hate Nat- and I Nat- say as I as I am in the bad If you try to romance <laughs> Pat, uh, Pan Am as a, female, as, a, as a female V, it seems that um, only when you try to initiate a homosexual relationship do you get a rejection. And if, if you try I- to initiate a heterosexual relationship with someone who's homosexual, there's just not that option. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can verify the Pan Am because I played as a uh, mm-hmm. female V, but the way, that it, v. the way that it's handled there is like you're kind of like sliding your mm-hmm. uh, arm on her leg or whatever, and she just says, "Oh, let's let's not let's just be friends, whatever." But from what mm-hmm. from from what you would describe from um, from River's reaction, it was definitely <laughs> yeah, you the more nuclear in. option, right? <laughs> You, you 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 go all in. You put all your chips on the table. I wonder how how would you guys feel then about let's say like a mod that allowed a male V to romance River. I think context is different in the sense that when when there is mods to make, um, what's the way I want to word this? For, for games being predominantly. For being uh, dominated by a straight white male demographic Mm -hmm. to allow for a mod to allow underrepresented communities to have some semblance of something that reflects their own background. That is significantly different than making Judy straight so that the audience that's already being catered to have more of already what they have. I I think there's a significant Mm -hmm. difference between the two. Okay. But yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, like, I just super ran in. away while this question got asked. Um, <laughs> I I know this. Um, I know these mods were really big when like Dragon Age and and the Mass Effects came out because it was the whole idea of like oh because uh, Mass Effect Andromeda changed this. Where I think almost every character in Andromeda was bi. I think, um, but in Dragon Age Inquisition, that wasn't the case. Um, I, I have to agree with what Jose s- said for the underrepresented re- communities. Oh, it's great. Yeah. And I'm here for it. But when it's something like this, that makes a gay character straight, that's just not good. <laughs> it's not great. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's just like, that's just, 
homosexuality. No, that's just a uh, heteronormativity. I'm hmm. sorry, I had a brain fart. I don't. Fucking... Words is that much fart good. Fart. Many populate. Big word. Yes, <laughs> I feel so bad. I had something, and now it's just completely gone. Like I had something. I I was just gonna go deep, and I have one brain cell. It's a tiny shrimp just floating around in circles. I don't remember anything. <laughs> I I would say cyberpunk <laughs> deserves better, but I don't know. I think everyone knows my opinion on the game overall. It's just. To me, it's a, it's a pretty medi- mediocre experience yep, all for around. Me, yeah. so. like, when I finished, when I got all the endings, which, by the way, you can tr- if you <laughs> one of the endings probably deserves a trigger warning. Um, yeah, I think I know um, what you're talking about. I ended up spoiling um, wanna, how to get some of the endings. I, <laughs> you want to circle I, back to that discussion? Um, I, I think the yeah. only real way you can experience cyberpunk is in your new model of a Tesla car. Because <laughs> apparently oh the, uh, the the twenty twenty one model of a Tesla Model S is, will include a built in gaming PC, uh, complete oh, with AMD's no. Navi twenty three no. GPU, and no. a whopping up to Elon ten Musk teraflops of processing Doge power. Coin. We're not talking about this. Which puts it in a position to overpower the Radeon RX fifty seven hundred XT in terms of raw outputs. Uh, Mesa, mm-hmm. you're you're probably the most techie one here. Do you want to maybe take that part over? Why? are they doing this <laughs> i guess listen, but like you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta you, you're losing miles you can't you can't use it while you're driving because you're losing miles like why would you, that's got to eat through a shit ton of fucking power what <laughs> i know they had their whole battery day like last year um which i i never did i never did look that up because uh, I'm not that big a fan of Tesla and Elon Musk, but they're, 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 the, the advancements to battery technology is actually very important. Um, um, but um, I would, yeah, 5700 X. Like that's essentially what my last graphics card was. I don't think. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Tesla's already expensive. I don't think like the extra two, three grand oh, would be like would be excessive. But just buying mm. fucking Switch, you don't need a fucking gaming Why? PC on the go. Well, was, but you need to just, play Skyrim on everything on your Switch. <laughs> <laughs> you play Skyrim gonna, on everything. What's the people who this, to this is rich people? Shit. People who use Teslas are like fucking sixty nope. years old anyway. Like, who cares? Like, they're not gonna play. They're not gonna play fucking video games. I mean, I can't say anything. Uh, when a Tesla dealership opened in my hometown, and my dad dragged me w- with him, I sat mm. and played uh, Tetris and <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> I mean, fuck show Tesla, so I can't say anything. Rip Nvidia, yes, too. Well, well, I mean, fuck me and Mesa. Um, freaking the Tesla factory in Fremont's literally right in our backyard. Mm-hmm. It's th- thanks for jacking up the prices on studio apartments to two grand. You fucking piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, ri- yeah, rip, rip, uh, uh, yeah, rip, uh, rip Nvidia. Since like a lot of the stuff that they do is um, a lot of the advancements that they make to the graphics cards is is. Uh, in terms of how well it can handle like AI functionality in order to be put in smart cars and stuff like that. So I, I just want to say I find it highly ironic that Elon Even Musk Tesla is like a diehard AD. fucking like cyberpunk and Deus Ex fan when he would like <laughs> undoubtedly be the fucking villain of a fucking cyberpunk oh. game. <laughs> Uh, just a reminder for when the pandemic started, he literally responded to someone on Twitter and went, nah, man, we're, we are, we are living in Deus Ex now, which needs the plot, needs a reminder of the plot of Deus Ex, which is the Illuminati trying to unleash a pandemic on, on the entire world. Yeah, he has <laughs> his icon, JC Denton. <laughs> icon JC Denton for like months, and it's like, no, you don't no, get it. no. That and he also retweeted and made this Photoshop of like Dogecoin when the whole GameStop stuff started. I mean, if you want, we we can just pull 180 and just make this the uh, trash on Elon Musk for the next hour. Dude, I didn't apply for a Tesla job because I knew that if I ended up meeting Musk someday, I would punch him and I would just get fired or probably arrested. (laughs) 
<laughs> the only reason I did it. I'm, I'm proud of your convictions. <laughs> like, Tesla. Why? Elon Musk is Elon Musk has basically missed, uh, Mr. Magoo his way throughout his entire life. Oh, do, do you and like how he comes out and he's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm a self-made Mesa. person, but he comes from a fucking family where it's like some kind of like mining. Emerald, so he was already fucking yeah, loaded. His father owned half an emerald mining facility in South Africa during apartheid. But but Mesa, I heard on the internet that he was a rags to riches story and that that's why I should be okay mm-hmm. with him being a billionaire. Remember when people wanted him to run for president? And Hold shit on, too? let me let me remember what he wanted um, PayPal to be called. It was something fucking. Dude, stupid. did you see what he named? He his also fucking is kid? a cat I can, cat girl uh, person. I can't even pronounce what the thumb. fucking named his kid. What the fuck is his? Kid I feel name? like that was also Grimes. Which I can sucks. we talk about something other than Elon Musk? Please? Yes, please. please. Okay, please. Let, me, let me just find this name real quick because it was it was fucking stupid. Let me just find it. Okay, I'll read right, a chapter I'm, I'm, of this I'm, while y'all talk. <laughs> Oh my god! Let's just move on to the next story. He makes a good jump. He also likes cat, cat, no, uh, cat girls, no. by the way. He also um, likes cat, act, cat girls, by the way. So, act, Activision Blizzard, the uh, publisher behind beloved titles such as Warcraft, Overwatch, and uh, Call of Duty, when confronted with the shareholder proposal for the company to interview at least one diverse candidate for each position, responded with a statement implementing a policy that would extend such an approach to all hiring decisions amounts to an unworkable encroachment on the company's ability to run its business and compete for talent in a highly competitive fast moving market and an attorney for the publisher went on to describe the proposal as micromanagement to the highest degree um, so with, what this says for those that haven't distilled it Activision Blizzard is so fucking racist they will not even entertain the fucking notion of in, and not not of not hiring of even interviewing a single diverse person like it, this is activision blizzard like there are hundreds hundreds thousands millions whatever people fucking applying for the job and you, you won't even take one person out of that pile that's from a diverse background whether it's based on race or orientation whatever anything like that you won't even fucking humor them with an interview not even a phone that's how fucking racist Activision Blizzard is. There, there's no fucking excuse for that. And like they have the fucking when they say like oh it's going to strain our resources. Fuck that. Fuck you. I don't know if I left anything there to discuss, but go for it. No, honestly, um, you we're at tracks. I, I think Blizzard in particular just fundamentally is not the same fucking. Um. Like, like even on the development front, it's not the same fucking studio. It's not the same fucking management. It is a completely different entity, especially since uh, they combine with Activision. It's it is it's fucking incredibly sad to see. telling that all of the and I again wrong person to talk. I have a World of Warcraft tattoo. I shouldn't be talking in this whatsoever, but um, the company started to definitely change, and you could notice that the changes started early when as soon as they were bought by Activision, all the original dudes left. I think it was Chris Metzen first. He retired. And then everyone started leaving after him, and then the, then this shit started happening. I 100% agree w- with you that Blizzard was never the same after Activision bought them. Mm. And honestly, I have no fucking clue why Activision bought them. Like, there was no point. Those two, like those two like fucking call of duty and wow like those two fucking developers don't seem to even go together like i don't understand it's it's always confused me and it's always concerned the fuck out of me when you go on the blizzard launcher and see world of warcraft next to call of duty yeah, and uh, Ramen Nomad in uh, chat uh, says that, that they've read that Activision has been strong arming Blizzard to uh, get in line and basically lose their independence and to just kind of assimilate into the larger uh, corporation, I guess, whatever you want to call it. See, that doesn't make any sense to me because of how much fucking money Blizzard makes from like WoW subs and that kind of thing. Like, I just wish that they would pull a fucking bungee and just buy themselves back. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> It's probably just a tighter contract in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, any thoughts, Boyd? Um, I'm pretty much just going to end up echoing what you said at the beginning, Jose. And I, I'm not as like attached, or not attached, but I'm not as um, knowledgeable about Blizzard, Activision Blizzard, or Blizzard pre-Activision buyout. Um, 
I kind of really don't follow a lot of stuff with them specifically because of just like everything that keeps happening um, with the, whether mm-hmm. it's the Blitz Chung situation, whether it's this new like, oh, if us actually trying to seek like diverse candidates is not really going to actually improve things for us. Weird corporate speak bullshit. Um, I, I, I don't know. It, the situation sucks. Um, it's not going to get better until until big sweeping changes are made like top down and mm-hmm. with people like Bobby Kotick in charge of like Activision or is it he's Activision or EA I always get that fucking good. he's Activision uh, Activision yeah EA okay, is so we- um he no that's old it's, it's, not it, anymore it, 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 it's bald dude it's not bald dude I don't think he is anymore no the guy oh, looks like a dark five? elf no well, whoever it is, um, <laughs> Bobby Code with Bo- someone like Bobby Code Code can try Andrew Activision, Wilson. That's not going to fucking change anytime soon. So, I, I honestly, if if I could pick, if I could, th- I can't remember exactly what they said, but um, I would say like if you can find a clip of what uh, uh, Derek from SDGC said on Thursday night about this subject, I think they pretty much hit the nail on the head. Um, you can find their stuff on like YouTube and whatnot. Just, Do you also SDGC think that YouTube. stuff? sadly isn't going to change until blizzard leaves because yeah blizzard one or the was, other yeah i honestly don't think any of this is going to change until blizzard ends up pulling a b- bungee and just saluting and then falling off and doing their own thing again because bungee fucking shifted as soon as they bought themselves back like I, shifted so I, I feel like blizzard's not going to change unless that happens too which as a blizzard fan it absolutely is disgusting and depressing I, to see the company go downhill. I think the best case scenario we can see in that case wouldn't be Blizzard um, leaving because just because I, I don't know what the exact terms of the contract, but I would imagine it's severely, severely stricter than what Bungie had, which is more of just a publishing versus being fully integrated into the uh, company. I, but I would think the best situation would be, and granted this would come at the cost of the IP, would basically be all the older Blizzard talents making a new studio and starting from scratch but, they have um, already done that uh the director on wow for legion and battle for azeroth which were the last two expansions now owns another mmo studio and they're working under riot games they're I like they making a, a league of like, i think they're making a league of legends mm mmo now or working on it the second you said uh league of legends i was out I was gonna say, isn't that just trading one <laughs> shitty abusive parent company for another shitty abusive parent yeah. company at that point? I mean, to be fair, Blaine, yes. the latter is far more explicitly sexist. That's true. At least they're honest about it, I guess. Yeah, they don't try to hide it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see. Who's uh, excited for <laughs> video games, everybody? <laughs> Dude, freaking this show so far is just a bummer left and right. Holy shit. And, th- and we actually seem to be going over time. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's Please, see. You No more depressing shit. There, uh, we can skip over some of the news for now. There, there's, there is one more I specifically want to do, and then we can just jump into games. If that is everyone cool with that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so the one that I do want to get into is um, Able Gamer COO uh, Steven Spawn recently took Behold Studios, the developer behind the title Out of Space, uh, to task for the language used in the game's accessibility mode. When toggling the accessibility m- mode option on, the play- players are greeted with accessibility mode decreases the difficulty significantly. This option will block some achievements and and may take away much of the thrill of the game. It is only recommended to those alienated by how hard the game currently is. Turn it on, turn it on anyway. Uh, so Spawn criticized the developer for the wording of it, stating that the game admonishes the player for the needed accessibility. Um, so I guess before I open the floor, I'll just go ahead and give my two cents, and that I think it's fair to criticize poorly worded, um, I guess subtext of putting on accessibility modes or easier difficulties. I know we've been on the record multiple times for um, talking about uh, Wolfenstein 2 specifically for when you put it on easy mode. It's not text, but it shows you like wearing a fucking baby bib. Like it's fucking making fun of you for doing it, even though that game, that game's difficulty is fucking broken so bad where that's the only um, real optimal way to play it. Um, Can I 
can I peek in really, really fast? I think we should at least bring up that the developers did respond to him and yes, you were that. incredibly open to criticism and did I mean this obviously isn't isn't an excuse, but they did bring up that English wasn't their first language and that could have um that could have been a reason why it came off as it was. Uh, obviously, I'm not saying that that's an excuse, but that's what they brought up. But they did say that they were actively working on changing it and that it would be available in the next patch. Yeah, so I, I guess I kind of know, just that, I guess like, I kind of just more want to use this as a launching pad for the general discussion. No, uh, no. Maybe, yeah, maybe, I just I just want to point out that this is a good story. Developers actually came out and we're mm-hmm. like, OK, we will fix this. But like, yeah, just wonder. I, I will say and this might be potentially um i don't want to say controversial but I'm, I'm open to having my mind changed on it i personally don't think the statement was worded that horribly and that so i i will always ad- advocate advocate for um difficulty options and accessibility modes you should never um as, as, as steven spawn puts it admonish players for doing that let them have their own prerogatives and how they want to play but on the same token um i don't th- Think, and I think you would agree on this point, Sarah. It's it's not necessarily wrong for a developer to say we would like we we have like an intended design in mind, and some of that comes from the challenge. So so at least in my mind, and I think I've illustrated an example of it before. Of like, let's take Demon Souls. Like, let's say that's like a level ten difficulty game. If you're level seven. Uh, skilled player that's only like a if you if you do the math that's like a level three difficulty if you're a level one skilled player playing the same game that is a significantly harder experience than what the other person's having so putting Mm -hmm. difficulty modes and accessibility options will bridge that gap so that that intended um, game design is more in line with it so if you look at a game like jedi fallen order i would say that game is fundamentally not that good if you purposely put it at a lower difficulty like it's very geared towards an intended level of difficulty for players but the same side as i as i opened with that is completely someone's prerogative but i would say that there's nothing necessarily wrong wrong with a very very soft nudge telling players we recommend playing it this way yes but but i um i will also speak up because I, I consider myself a disabled gamer and I do use accessibility mm-hmm. options when I do play things because they do help me enjoy games to the ability that I can. And I think it's okay for developers to say that they intended their game to be played a specific reason, but it shouldn't be on the accessibility feature menu. It shouldn't. 100%. And ha. Huh, I did a blog post on this, just prepping my own stuff again because Control did this when uh, Remedy put a- assist slash accessibility features into Control with the last DLC, and they said, and I quote, "Control was was designed to be both challenging and rewarding, and we encourage you to first try playing it with the assist mode disabled. Assist mode was their accessibility feature." So they were flat out telling people who need accessibility features to play games, do not play it with this because this isn't how we intended f- for it. No, you don't do that. No matter if it's an assist mode or if it's an accessibility mode. If you want to have your game played a specific way or you think your game should be played a specific way, that's fine. Say that in like interviews. Say that in like when you boot the game up. Don't say it in an accessibility feature because that's just telling people like me who more often than not need those accessibility features that how we are going to play the game because we wish to enjoy the game is so how the developers didn't want it to be that it's not fair to them that we're using these modes because they claim that we're not going to enjoy it or that's not the direct way that it was meant for them to be played or meant for the game to be played that we just shouldn't do it. Like, no, that's that's not how it's supposed to work. And the fact that developers are still doing that, even if it's maybe, God forbid, it was because that they didn't have uh, native English speaking staff and maybe they worded it wrong. We don't know. But but the fact that he was that it was even still put in the accessibility option menu is not okay. And I think if developers continue to do that, then it's going to set a precedence for accessibility features and the way that developers handle them going forward. Like with, with all the shit that we talk about 
uh, Naughty Dog, which is 100% totally valid, their accessibility modes and how it was handled is the best that that gaming has has ever done it. And I honestly don't think that any games are going to get that close unless something comes out in the next year that absolutely blows it away, which I highly don't think that's going to happen. I just circling back, I just I don't think it's okay to put say something like this is not how we intended for you to play the game in the accessibility features. It's not because those are there to allow everybody to enjoy your game, which is what gaming is. You want everybody, no matter whether you're a disabled gamer or, or, or not, to enjoy playing games. And if they keep wording it like that in that feature menu, that's not going to happen. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> uh, Blaine, I know you're a very avid uh, Dark Souls uh, or just Souls player in general. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this? I don't know if I call myself a very, very avid player, but apparently. Apparently good enough to platinum Dark Souls 2, at least. And Bloodborne, but that's besides the point. Um, I mean, my whole opinion on this entire subject kind of just comes back down to if your game is not. If your game's not enjoyable to everyone, that's a flaw. Not if your if your game is not as enjoyable as possible to like people with certain disabilities, that's not something you should be proud of. Accessibility is something we just need to keep pushing forward, and I just and just the uh, people should have options available to them without patronizing bullshit. That's that's my extent of my feelings. I, I guess to maybe isolate it a bit and feel free to jump in here, Mesa, is that is the key issue with this, because I think we all basically agree that mm -hmm. difficulty options should exist. Accessibility options should exist by default, but ju just to isolate it, this comes down to the wording of, of these said modes would be the issue. C can we agree on that? Oh, yeah. Part. Wording was terrible. What would be the ideal wording for each people here if you want to give it like maybe a, a sentence if mm -hmm. i guess mesa if you want to go first it would be on the difficulty stage on normal it says the way we intended this game to be played there See, that's, that's, on, that's when selecting difficulty on normal and, and i feel like i feel honestly for me personally i feel like if you're going to the accessibilities option not <laughs> Uh, uh you you're kind of except you, you, going into the acceptable no one designs how do i say this right <clears throat> um, I, I think semantics might be the word um, yeah semantics might the, be the wrong word but i think you're talking about like where things belong in menus right yeah the 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 in, the intention of that accessibility menu is to change the game so that you can play it and enjoy it, right? Um, and I feel like, you know, you don't need to tell the player that they're changing the game by going into the accessibility mode. Most players already know that. They don't need to be, you know, scold, scold, scolded about how they're, they're playing the game wrong by entering here. The, um, or if they're made or if they're made to feel bad for like turning yeah off. yeah i feel like honestly i feel like just saying hey as a developer like when you start the game this stuff just, just with everything on normal i'm sorry with everything on, uh defaulted and there's just normal difficulty this is how we intended this game to be played i personally feel like that's all that needs to be said and um, if you need to go into the options, you can. If you need to access it, I don't need lip from the developer <laughs> telling me that I'm playing their game wrong. No, I Just tell me how you want to be played, and then I'm I good. Would, I would honestly go even a step further and maybe say, just I don't really give a shit what your what you what, what difficulty you intended the game to be played on. Well, no, because some well, some no, no, difficult. No. Okay, sorry. Well, yeah, some difficulty um, can be what they tuned for most of the audience or what have you, or like, mm -hmm. like Dark Souls doesn't act, quote unquote have a difficulty sec uh, thing. But I mean, at the end of the day, if your games, if your game, like, 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 if you, if your game has difficulty selection and you say, well, this is the intended difficulty, and while you, I, I don't know, it just feels like an arbitrary thing of like, I guess we'll start here when most of the people are going to assume when you start on normal or whatever the, the 
selector starts on, that's most likely the default option. It just feels like I, don't, I feel like almost it, it, it almost feels like it's it's too much thought being placed on how can we change these words when it's do we even need the word at all? Can I, we just I be think, like this is the yeah, default I mean, and then put accessibility I options? Off, as I think to build off of Mesa's, um, I, I think mm-hmm. it would be somewhat similar in that I, I don't think it's necessarily wrong to say like uh, here here is a default setting. This is what we recommend for most players, and then you can have a little subtext saying. We recommend playing this game at a level that gives you a certain amount of challenge. So if mm-hmm. if, if, a, if that certain amount of challenge that you're still comfortable with is on easy or I don't care if there's fucking 20 different selections for difficulty modes. I, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, Whatever is comfortable for you, feel free to play. But we do recommend giving yourself just enough room for a challenge. That's how we feel like our game is best experienced. The, yeah, I don't does. even think it needs wording to begin with. Just don't put wording in there. And again, I hate to bring mm-hmm. it up, but the way that The Last of Us 2 ha- handled it, towards even when you first boot up the game, the accessibility options come up first. And then when you hit circle to like go past them, a little screen comes up that says you can change these at any time during the game just by hitting start. Like I, I don't even think it needs words other than that. Other than mm-hmm. it going, hey, you can change these at like any time. Like yeah. even hitting start, not just in the like start menu of the game, but by hitting start to like pause it. Like I just don't think accessibility options need words to begin with because every time I boot up a game, I look for the accessibility options first. Like I will look for them because those are what I use to help me enjoy games. Like uh, not not all games, but like a good selection. That's how it helps me enjoy them and. And a lot of people are like me. They'll instantly go and look for the accessibility features first. And I think putting them front and center to us and then being like, hey, you don't have to mess with them now, but you can mess with them later. Just just hit start and go to settings. Like, I think that's so important. I don't even think you need to have words to it. That's fair, don't yeah. put words to your like difficulty. Don't put words to your accessibility. I don't need to be... I, Oh, excuse me. I don't need to be scolded looking at you, Remedy. And I say this with all the love and compassion in my goddamn heart. Mm. You don't need to be scolded for turning on accessi- accessibility f- features. Never. Never. And the fact that games are still doing this makes me just want to throw my crabs. Makes me just want to throw it. Mm. It's angry. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I promise. I guess, I, be, I guess for me personally, I do think that there is a space as, um, as like a creator in a medium to say like, Hey, this is how I intended this to be experienced. However, you can change it in any way you want to. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like that. I feel like that's fair. Yeah. I, I think we all kind of have different outputs, but I think Mm -hmm. it all kind of comes down to the same thing where we, we do want difficulty options. We do want accessibility things. And I think we can all even probably universally agree with something that Sarah brought up um, with the last of us too, where it just, just put those options front and forward. You can engage with them. If you, if you choose to um, just, just do the dumb shit of saying like, Oh, you suck or something like just, just let me play the fucking game, please. <laughs> Yeah, like, I want to turn immortality on when I play control. Your game's fucking hard. I will turn immortality on when I play control. I already beat your game without it on to begin with. God. Who, who wants to who wants to talk video games on this video games podcast? Yeah. Let's do it, gaming. Uh, I might actually have to bounce early. I love video games. Okay, in that case, Blaine, feel free to uh, go ahead. So, um, I've been. Not playing a whole lot of different stuff. So I feel like I've been saying that every week now. Um, because of the announcement and new trailers and stuff for Resident Evil 8, which I'm sad I didn't get to talk about last week, but whatever. Yes, I have a crush on the big lady like everyone else. Um, <laughs> I've been back. I actually got uh, Resident, Evil Gold, Resident Evil 7 Gold on sale um, and went back into that to get the Platinum, which I did. Um, that game's still really good. Yes, it's flawed. Yes, it drags a little bit in the second half, but I don't know. I feel like out of curiosity, what would you label flaws in seven? Um, I would label flaws being once you finish Lucas's whole bit and you do the boss fight with Jack, you do the boat like the game doesn't feel quite as well paced or as interesting. I think the stuff Mm -hmm. on the ship is good. 
Yeah. I even don't mind this stuff in the mines. I think it's a very, I also think it's a very, because I'm, I'm a sucker for the whole like end where you begin narratives. So the fact you go back to the guest mm-hmm. house is, mm-hmm. I think, something very cool. Um, but I mean, after playing the game, probably like, God, one, two, three, at least like five times or something over different modes, different like, I had to actually replay this time because I didn't have my save data from when I owned the game previously. Um, there's just I never I never get tired of going through the house I get a little tired of having to go through the motions of okay we've gone through the ship okay we are going through the mines now we're going to the second part of the mine I, Madhouse I fixed definitely that agree with you oh does you Madhouse fix agree? it oh yeah I was going to say specifically the uh, ship segment because I had just finished replaying I think you even said like you picked up 7 because you saw me streaming it that but was the, part the, of it yeah but the fact that you have to go through the ship um, sensibly like twice is kind of what kills it all. So like, like some of yeah. it's different. Like here's some stuff here that if you did something in the past and, and impacts the future, but it's like very limited. Uh-huh. But having to go through that same environment where it where it is a ship and, the, and like every floor looks basically exactly the same. It's a little monotonous. And I don't even mind that. Like the first time I played it, it's more on like the fifth replay. And actually, well, if you want to say sixth replay, because I missed an antique coin and I was not playing this again after that. So I had to reload a save go back through like that's when you really notice that that latter half of the game is just kind of imperfect but i mean fine with the past ship stuff i think the past ship stuff is cool and like a storytelling angle well i think the storytelling of it is great it's just annoying to go through a second time yeah i I like how they designed it all destroyed and stuff in the second half of it but it's still just like a slog to go through plus i wish there was a way way to like skip it if you had already beaten it once like you could actually just skip that tape segment because like you don't have to rewatch the mia tape you don't have to rewatch the derelict house tape if you really don't want to Mm -hmm. um i haven't had to watch happy birthday since beating the game once because i know the code to the door um it i will say the Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I know. Um, and I, I will say, I actually, I've played some of the DLC. I mean, I've, I've beaten Not a Hero before, but I'll go back into this time on Professional. I played the Bedroom Escape DLC. That one's a lot of fun. It I was like really neat. I, actually figuring out all the different things and like realizing, oh, there's no way to actually stop Marguerite from coming back. You just have to keep in mind like to trick her all three times. Did you find um, all the dead possums? No, I gotta find uh, dead rats, and I gotta find all dead, them. dead rats. I don't know why I thought they were possums. My head just went to possums. Big rats. Big. Rats. Oh my goodness. But yeah, uh, um, other than that, I mean, I played detention. Like I said um, I'm gonna be getting back into Stardew Valley very soon, as soon as that fucking update drops, and I'm probably gonna try and platinum uh, or eight comes out. Nice. Resident yeah, Evil's good. It's, it's a good time to replay through a bunch of Resident Evil games um, oh, yeah. in the lead I, up to I uh, the deluxe edition. So I'm just like, oh, I better. I was about to buy practice. the collect the uh, collector's edition, which was like fucking like what? How much was it, Sarah? Like two hundred and nineteen dollars after tax. It was like two twenty five. <laughs> I hate oh, myself. Like she Listen. bought it. But Listen, I'm, I'm probably getting on Steam. So I'm just like Ehh. it doesn't charge me till a day before it ships. So leave me alone. It gives me it gives me a couple months to get the funds and put them aside for my dumb giant Chris statue. I guess um I, I haven't played too much, so I'll just go ahead and go right after Blaine. Um so I also played Resident Evil 7. It's a it's a good time. The no not a hero DLC is a good action twist on um on the foundation of the base game. Like you're running around and so there, there's two key different things you can do. You have direct ADS versus slight um, scoping in, which in the base game, it takes you a second for the reticule to narrow down into the single dot, and each shot resets that. Uh, that's not a thing and not a hero. You're just completely ADSing, and you can go for as many head like pinpoint headshots as you want. Mm-hmm. And with Chris and, and typical Chris uh, action, uh, you can just you can just punch the fuck out of all the enemies, which is pretty damn useful it it like fundamentally changes the way that you approach encounters and i'm curious to see how resident evil 8 might take elements of those especially since since uh some of the battles at least when we've seen from the trailers are kind of hitting at like 
bigger arena battles like where they show the shot where there's a bunch of uh villagers heading towards you and there's even one dude with a giant hammer so maybe they'll add contextual melee attacks or something like that let's let's where just be blunt let's just be blunt this game looks like resident evil 4 2 it, that's what it looks like 4 2 2 no 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 not 4 2 2 resident evil 4 colon 2 the sequel or the mm-hmm. sequel. Oh, uh, yeah. oh, oh, electric boogaloo. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, I mean, um, seriously, like, I've given up on my idea that this is an elaborate bait and switch and it is truly a Resident Evil 4 remake. I have totally given up on that. Um, but this is definitely still a, in my opinion, this is still definitely like a, well, we never did anything with that Hookman demo and that aesthetic. What if we go back to that as a base idea of like aesthetic, of attitude, of tone? and then see what we can do with that in this new se- this new sequel um and it definitely feels like i'm honestly i've been saying this as a joke on twitter but i'm actually curious like is this maybe going to be the one where they don't give you an explicit like this is a scientific experiment gone wrong or are they just going to be vague about it and be like well yeah umbrella is here and connected but um uh, we don't know exactly what's going on vampires just, and werewolves just fucking let it be yeah. weird is what as weird as it wants Exactly. I'm just kind of hoping that they stick with the vampire and werewolf stuff because like Resident Evil is already fucking nuts enough and I can't believe it's taken them seven mainline games to finally go you know maybe we should put werewolves and vampires in this like I just feel like these should have been here a long time ago and the fact that they're doing it now yeah I I hope that the word T virus or like mold is not mentioned once in this entire game hear me out on this though what if it's nano machines infected with the T virus. Mm. You're double dipping. No. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and she's not actually that tall. It's just hypnosis. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> I, I Tris, that, I've <laughs> never, I've never gotten over the fact that he said the uh, vamp throwing your knife in your shadow is hypnosis. I've never. <laughs> ever gotten over that i never will that, it, it, that so was stupid. the explanation for that scene in yeah. yes. Four. <laughs> it's so dumb yes, i, I it, love that it's it's, hypnosis. It, it's a bit of a segue but and i love ocelot how like hypnotized himself to believe that he was ocelot who believed that he was actually i know like, that much they, so they never he explained what like the, his arm was like possessing him with this <laughs> well see they, they explained it was to fool the patriots but they never elaborate i was just like wait how does that bypass their system somehow like it doesn't make sense and i just love how it's because he seems uh, so right. crazy that they're just like oh my god you're like oh fuck what do we do i hate but this <laughs> I, I love how um Revengeance just takes it, just like yeah, nano machines are fucking stupid. Let's have the senator like absorb like the green life energy from this fucking Metal Gear and just be- become like a fucking super saiyan. And he literally just looks at the camera, and says, "Nano machines, son." Which 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 one talked about memes? Was was it was that Revengeance? Uh, that, that was also two. That, well, that's two also was the Revenge. one that was about it, and yeah, the character in Revengeance makes mention of it. It's gene meme scene, scene. and sense. My God, the animal machine. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Yeah. I mean, Ryan looks like a scene kid. <laughs> <laughs> all grown up oh i feel so weird oh, I mean, can we can yeah. we talk about raiden's son that we don't see after middle gear solid 4 he's yeah. just <laughs> not in revengeance isn't he, in like he's right. isn't he in like a sailor uniform if i remember correctly i, I remember I him being in a little t-shirt so. i don't know but he has a yeah. son rose did have a kid That's rose true. gave birth to a child man i, I can go off on middle gear sunny's in sunny's in revengeance but, uh, yes she is she's living her best life kid. Absolutely. As soon I oh Christ. god, as soon as Metal Gear is brought up, I just lose all fucking hope. Hey, oh, hey, I love it. I love it. Gone yet. Yeah. Gone yet. We're gonna get trapped. Yeah. This, this, this is the last thing I'll say. Ocelot was the best good guy in the entire series the entire time, and it's all retconned, and I don't fucking care. I, I, is it no one a good guy in Metal Gear? Like I don't. Yeah, Ocelot I don't is the secret good Ocelot. guy. Well, there's good guys. David is a good guy. Hal is a good guy. David. Um, His name is Solid David. Solid Snake. Yeah. Huey no, Emmerich would have been a MAGA asshat. God, yeah, He's yes. based in Red Pilled. <laughs> oh, you've seen that video. Oh, ba- oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Mesa, I need you to send me that video I, at some I, point. I'm going to have it right now. Um, 
Actually, no, Macy, you look it up. I'll, I'll go into what we're supposed cool. to be talking nah, about. Say, you go into that because otherwise I'm going to end up driving this podcast <laughs> into the fucking ground. It's 11.50 um, okay. and I need. I have other things I need to do. Uh, real real quick, uh, uh, Hades. Um, so I, I have beaten Hades. I, I, at least the first time you, you beat Hades, the character. I don't know if I have it in me to do it nine more times. Just because I think I've gotten my fill of that game and there's just other things I want to play on my Switch. Like, um, I need to finish up Super Mario Sunshine. I haven't touched Galaxy. I want to get Origami King. Then there's Mario 3D World coming out. Oh, Origami King is another game I've been playing. It's I'm good. so excited to finally get to, 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 to finance that soundtrack I've been listening to. <laughs> but uh, since, I, guess, since I never could play it since my Wii U was stolen. But uh, oh, no. in between building furniture and putting this room together, um, the only game I've really been playing has been uh, Valhalla. And so I just kind of have a, a jumble of notes here and I'll kind of go through them. But it is an Assassin's Creed ass Assassin's Creed game. But like if you've played Odyssey, it's basically that the only real substantial differences that it's doing is that there's not side quests in the traditional sense where you have a log. They're kind of more diegetic. You'll stumble in an area and it's just kind of like this rough circle encompassing it. You don't get any text. You don't get any markers telling you what to do. It'll be like you you run across a farmer. He says like, geez, there's a lot of rats in my field. I don't know what to do. If you walk around, you'll see a lady who's complaining about her cats in her house. You let the cats out. The cats get the mice. But there's, so there's no it does it's not very explicit about what to do and so in that sense it's nice, but at the same time there's not necessarily rewards and sometimes it can be frustrating because a lot of them are glitched you don't know like where specifically what to do so it's kind of a double edged sword in that regard. Um, there's entirely too much side shit to do and a lot of the exploration is necessary in order to upgrade your weapons in order to get new abilities in order to play optimally and. This game is obsessed with hiding collectibles underground. So you need to find like holes in caves on these on these hills. You need to find you need to break into like a house to get to a secret cellar. And it is fucking annoying as shit. And I ran into one instance that it that aggravated me actively. And like I, I'd been going into open world games with the same mindset of I need to stop fucking doing side content. I just need to do I just need to do the mainline. The mainline quest is already long enough. I welcome do, do to not, hell. We can't do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, like like don't bore yourself with this fucking side shit. That's not even good. Um, but I ran into a thing where I I was I spent so long trying to get into this underground area to to get a collectible, and then I found a door I couldn't get past. I'm like, oh fuck, there's there's not skills you need in order to open doors. Did I miss something? I'm walking around the hill trying to find like a secret entrance and oh, oh, you can dive like under lakes to find like secret underwater underwater entrances uh no it turns out the solution was i wasn't far enough in the story where that door just magically fucking opens and i'm just like fuck you game you wasted like an hour of my time <laughs> behind this fucking arbitrary ass door and i'm just like you know what fuck this game fuck trying to um play optimally i'm i'm literally just going to mainline it like like this game has broken me out of my completionist habit with these kinds of games where I would like to get the chest. I would like to do this side quest. I'm like, nope, just mainlining it. I'm going to get the fucking tower so I can fast travel. I want to do the raid so I can do some upgrades because, because that's very explicit. You go there, you do it. Like there's nothing you can really miss, but it almost seems like it would be better if like, if you want to have gated off content like that for story progression, just have something pop up when you walk up to the door and just be like, note, not accessible until you exactly. complete X mission. Like I've seen games mm-hmm. do that. It, it, even Metroidvania ones, they just tell you like, "Hey, you don't have the thing you need. Just come back later, okay?" So I mean, yeah, it's whatever. But it, it's still technically the animus. Just say not available in the sequence. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, like you're still in the goddamn animus. Just like, Must complete oh, sequence you can't no, use this five dash three before you can access this memory. Mm-hmm. I, they I never was, went in this cave at this point in time, so you can't do it yet. Boom. I, I will say there is a bit of a sense of humor in the side quests. Like there's one where you're playing, you're doing like a little fake raid with some kids. You're playing along like, Oh, I'm a big strong warrior. Here are these kids playing like pretend Viking. And then you're done playing with them. And then you realize the kids are from an enemy warring faction. Cause they start saying like, Oh yeah, fuck the Raven clan. We're going to kill them. You're like, Oh wait, that's me. I was training. Uh, no, I don't want to say little Nazis. Cause okay. Th- that brings up a bigger issue. A I bad do, guys. I do not give a shit about the characters in this game 
so early on, you, you, you greet someone from the Brotherhood or the Hidden Ones. Like they're calling themselves at this point in the timeline, whatever. It's, it's the Assassins. Um, they seem to not give a shit that you are a Viking. Your entire purpose in life is to go to other lands and steal and fucking murder and pillage and raid these places. It's like you're kind of inherently a piece of shit. And the Assassins are just like, I don't, I don't know. We don't care. So I just find it hard to give a shit about anything I'm doing when no one addresses what you're doing is inherently fucked up. Oh. Um, I, I think I've already talked about the combat on on a previous show, I like how the stamina system works, and it is nice. Uh, they do. There's one minor gameplay annoyance for me in that uh, swapping between bows, you do have to dig through the menu in order to swap them. There's no quick swap, which I believe even origins did you could swap between i think it was like four different kinds of bows it was on the d-pad you could so. swap between them because i like using the predator bow which is basically a sniper where you can control where the arrow goes mid-flight and uh, the way that odyssey did it it didn't have multiple bows it was just one and the different kinds of utilities that they had were relegated to um your your ability bar so this is more like origins in that regard, which was, which I don't think is necessarily a good thing. Um, so that's a little bit annoying. I do enjoy the difficulty in some of the fights, but a lot of it feels incredibly artificial where, I don't know, this guy's level 90, you're level, you're level 80. You don't stand a fucking chance. Don't even bother. Like you, you can't get good enough with tactics because tactics don't fucking matter if you're not the same level. Mm, and that feels tough. incredibly fucking annoying. Um, one thing I do like about it that remedies a lot of my, not a lot of issues, it remedies a big issue with Odyssey is that it's not giving you loot every fucking 10, st- every 10 steps you take. Um, so loot in terms of like equipment, like your armor, your weapons and whatnot, it's very rare you get weapons. So in that sense, they have more of an impact and you spend time upgrading them. So it's more meaningful in that regard. It's not just fucking vomit like it is in Odyssey. Um, but the negative of that being that you do have to upgrade your weapons, which means you do have to explore these fucking frustrating exp- exploration segments. So it's, uh, it's a mixed bag all around, but I think that's about it. I have in terms of Valhalla, um, open to questions. <laughs> I, I'm only like maybe 10, 15 hours in something like that. It's a big mm. game. I've, I barely scratch the surface in terms of like how long it can be. I, I would just, I would say just play Odyssey to be honest. <laughs> oh, wow. Really? Yep. That's unfortunate. Especially now you have your 3070, just play it on PC, buddy. <laughs> well, jokes on you. I hated Odyssey and I loved origin. So I'm going to play Valhalla. <laughs> to be fair, you already I own it. You. I do. It's just sitting there. <laughs> Might as well. I haven't played gathering dust. I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game since Assassin's Creed 2 was sort of new, so I have no input on this. Mesa, have you played any of the newer uh, Assassin's Creed I, games? I played about 10 to 15 hours of Origin. Of, uh, sorry, of, of uh, Odyssey. Okay, I want... You are specifically useful to me in this regard. Okay. Um, you, you're useful to me in many regards, but this is what I need you for specifically right now. <laughs> I miss older Assassin's Creed games such as so syndicate would have been the last one just give mm-hmm. me a big open city and mm-hmm. let me do side quests and stuff like there like i think like the r the rpg uh i don't want to call it trilogy because they're not necessarily intertwined but these these last three games i don't like them as much as older assassin's creed games yep like, older Assassin's creed games are more like i don't want to say comfort mm-hmm. food but i really mm-hmm. enjoyed them as someone who finished assassin's creed 2 this morning I, I uh, agree. I, I think they can keep like the the combat changes, but I just want I don't know. Give me give me big city. Give me a lot of characters. I, I don't care about all the RPG mm-hmm. mechanics. Um, uh, yeah, because it seems like uh, it seems like yeah they were so 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 they 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 looked down on Assassin's Creed two, right? It feels like they lucked out on men making this very, very good, um, robust game. And they were 
kind they're kind of lost a little bit so they made the, the game again but with a lot of the features that they couldn't add, implement the first time they made brotherhood which is you know, amazing and then they did that again and they made revelations which is less good and they were like confused so, okay we need to move on what do we do america that's the <laughs> <laughs> and oh wait people really like the pirate stuff from america let's do that again and it just feels like they're constantly in that cycle of not really knowing what to do next and they're just kind of reacting to how people reacted last time um i think the best assassin's creed game in years is uh ghost of tsushima exactly they've been outdone Perfect. Mm-hmm. even though it doesn't have a city um man i just want to play syndicate i'm going to reinstall that as soon as we're done I'm, 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 um, this I'm going to. And you just said something and I miss it. <laughs> I loved Syndicate. It was Sarah. legitimately one of my favorite Assassin's Creed games. I know it Sarah disagrees really with good. me on this. Uh, Evie should have been the only playable character in Syndicate. I disagree, but I love Evie with all my heart and soul. Her brother is just such trash and garbage that I just love him so much. Just like, think about it. Jacob, Th- Jacob's a lot of fun. Evie's the better twin obviously this could be canonical there by the same no, publisher it. no i hate it go yes, away good for audio listeners i'm putting my rabbit and uh ev funko right next to each other go away it's gross well ubisoft is in the universe i mean uh, apparently every assassin's creed splinter cell and watchdogs game is connected so I just want a new fucking Splinter Cell. I need I need a new Splinter Cell. You will take Sam Fisher and Rainbow Six Siege, and you will like it. <laughs> I w- I want more. I need more Sam Fisher. In my I want. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I I guess I'm about done just because I haven't played much. But uh, basically, you want to go ahead. Uh, all right. Uh, well, yeah. I, I I beat Assassin's Creed two this morning. <laughs> um. Hey, that game was really good. Uh, um. Um, uh, and you know what? It, there's there's this reputation that Assassin's Creed games are long, and I feel like that has cascaded into Assassin Creed Assassin's Creeds be, being like uh hundred hour RPGs now. When you know Assassin's Creed two, that's like 30, 30, 40 hours. You know, you beat you can beat that if you blitz, you can beat that in like three days. Um. Uh. Again. So yeah, I, I beat. Uh, I, I I got I got the secret armor. Um. I unlocked just about everything I could from the money making aspect of two. Um. And yeah, it's, it's a me, your Uncle Mario. <sighs> just a good game. Just a really really solid game. Um. Though I've and so I've I switched to Brotherhood. Um. Right afterwards. Uh. Brotherhood. Uh, looks a lot better. I was surprised how much better it looks than two. Since uh, I, for context, you're playing the uh, remastered trilogy, right? That's true. I am playing the Ezio collection. That's right. I'm PS5, which you know, load times are so they're nice. Um, um I, I, it's weird to me because I think Ubisoft peaked incredibly fucking early with their Assassin's Creed protagonist. Like Ezio is hands down the best protagonist they've ever had in that series, and he hasn't mm-hmm. been in Ezio's the game really since. Good. Let's see. Assassin's Creed 2 came out 2008, I believe. The last game he was in was Revelation, which was tw- which would be 2010, or no, I that'd, that'd be so. 2011. 2011, 2011, think, because yeah. three came out to 2012, Apocalypse, whatever, blah blah blah. Um, but yeah, they <laughs> peaked early because the only protagonist I can I can like distinctly recall that I actually give a shit about were it was Ezio, mm-hmm. Evie, and Cassandra. You don't you don't care about um you don't care about uh oh, you know what Glory uh, Swords said Edward I did like Edward yes okay but that that was such like an outlier because he's like barely an assassin in there but like his personality I really dig him I mean technically Ezio is it oh fuck was it Syndicate where you find his armor and his body or was that Black Flag I I guess because I know be one of the games you you go into the assassin's vault. And you, you find Ezio's armor and his like skeletal corpse. Did you find Altair as Ezio in uh, Revelations? 
that might be what I'm thinking of. Yeah, like if I it, if I recall, like Ezio early, died like it? on a farm, like he was hell old or was or something. Yeah, like that. he was like old and he had a wife or something. I don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't remember. Um, I saw these answers. Because uh, uh, Ezio Ezio gets killed. I'm pretty sure. Uh, at the end of Revelations, I think. At the, no, no. the there's the uh, there's the there's the uh, no there's like the little animated like like twenty oh, minutes. Oh right. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, he gets, I'm pretty sure open too. That's about it. The movie that has the isn't it the Chinese assassin chick? Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, yeah. Ezio trains her. Yes, you're right. Oh my god, it's are we talking back. about the Michael Fassbender movie? I was going. No! <laughs> I watched that Garbo. Leave it alone. Oh, uh, I was going to it. I should watch it. Garbo. Anyway, sorry to derail. Go ahead, Mason. Oh, you're fine. Um, Brotherhood. Uh, it's my favorite. Um, my, my is my favorite Assassin's Creed. Um, for me, it goes Brotherhood two, and then oh, Brotherhood, and then a tie between two and four. I know I said I'm sorry for interrupting, but I have to do it one more time. I wish they would just bring back the fact that you can be a fucking murder machine in those old games, where as, as soon as you perform oh, one counter, you can take down thirty dudes with a single counter, fucking counter, hit. Counter, 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 it's counter, counter. beautiful. I like. It was literally like instantly, instantly when I was playing Brotherhood, it was like, all right, time to time to be the Grim Reaper. And then you just kill 15 people in a row and it's over. It's so it good. Dual assassinations, like where you had the <clears throat> armband and you just went walk up to people oh my and then God. walk away. And when they gave you two hidden blades, that That's was the saying. shit, man. That was the shit. Like, <laughs> blew your mind. You're like, we could have two of these? So you just I'm walk excited. up to two guards and take them out at the same time? Awesome. I mean, there's two things I'm very excited for in, in this playthrough. And it's one to eventually start up the whole brotherhood and using that ability, like being able, like the brotherhood is what makes Assassin's Creed brotherhood. My favorite, like being it's able to like a hit squad, it's a call for help. And you actually get to see, you actually see who drops down and you can recognize them by their armor and know exactly who they are. It, it feels really, it feels really cool. Um, and you can actually see them grow in the ranks and grow into bigger and bigger assassins. Like the um, weird fucked up kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then on top of that, I'm excited to finally get the berserker darts again because those are my favorite tool in any Assassin's Creed. Um, and uh, um, Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, it's. It's just such a good idea, and I love using them every single time. Are you going to go back and play Black Flag as well? I was thinking about getting the 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 Black Flag on Switch. Yeah, Black. Oh, that's coming to Switch. It is on Switch. It's oh shit! I didn't Switch, know. That. You know? Yeah, it came out um, with uh with uh Rebels. Rogue. Was that Rogue? It came out with Assassin's Creed Rogue in like a dual collection. Yeah. It's, it's so weird to me that. Or you can get Assassin's Creed 3 for the same price. Like, like, obviously, I don't want them to like repeat the same thing over and over, but Black Flag had such good fucking ship combat in it. And, mm. and so there's some of it in Origins and, little, and definitely more so in, um, in Odyssey, but it's not to the same degree. So I, I, would go for, I could go for a full on game about that. No, no, no. It's actually Rogue, actually. <laughs> yeah. Skull, yeah. skull, uh, skull and bones, baby. Just wait another ten years. <laughs> yeah, Rogue is basically Assassin's Creed. Rogue feels like Assassin's Creed Four's like little brother. Well, I mean, technically, it is about <laughs> like Edward's kid, isn't it? No, no, it's about no, no, Edward's, no. Edward's kid is Haytham. Haytham yeah. is uh, yeah. Haytham is a Templar dad. Oh man, mm-hmm. I remember that yeah. twist. Rogue is, <laughs> Rogue is Rogue is about um uh this Irish assassin who becomes who, a Templar who becomes a yeah. Templar who becomes disillusioned with the Assassin's Creed. They've never gone back to that concept either, which is a shame. You know what's really um, stupid, really well, dumb. Hmm? The comics have gone into assassins changing time like changing sides yes viewers there's been so many assassin's creed comics i've read almost all of them god uh the comic that was attached to assassin's creed 3 uh i can't remember what the hell the character's name was but he was like a descendant of this of this like russian assassin that only showed up in the comics and like he decides like times (laughs) like 
he went from assassin to templar back to assassin back to templar <laughs> like it like it happens they just only like talk about it in like the extended universe and stuff i'm, I'm not gonna lie this entire discussion is really because i have most of these on pc i'm really tempted to just reinstall brotherhood reinstall syndicate mm-hmm. black flag yeah i just really want to reinstall um, syndicate I'm, so <laughs> I'm looking at valhalla i'm just like why are you here <laughs> Um, you, it was really something really stupid about Rogue. I want to I want to get this out the way real quick, because so the whole point so so early in early on in Rogue, uh, something happens that basically looks like the assassins don't care about uh, regular people life like like the, the lives of like regular people, and so that that disillusions him and makes him join the Templar side. But when you join the Templar side, you can just freely assassinate normal people, and like that doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wait, what? Mm-hmm. Is that so? Wait, you can like GTA style just kill anybody in the street? Yep, and it doesn't synchronize you oh, <laughs> because you're a Templar now, so you're a bad guy. Oh, <laughs> Despite you joining the Templars, because the assassins were letting regular people die. Well, well, it's it's not any sense. It's weird too because like the further on you get, like you're basically killing off like who are your cohorts like in the beginning of the game. And I if, I don't remember the details, but there's something about like one of your old leaders, like she's going to use like a like gas bombs against citizens and shit. You're like, wait, what? why would assassins do this? Like like they're leg- they're legitimately doing it. I'm just like, what the fuck is this 180 shit? I mean, I hate to be that person who dives into Assassin's Creed lore, but it could be the Templars making the Assassins. Are you really eagle bad. diving into it? Yes. I mean, for that, I can only say it could be the it could be the Templars making the Assassins look really bad because um, um, I remember it being of, pretty explicit. And one of the Assassins in Rogue that you turn away from is your mentor from Three. Yeah, you cripple him if I what? remember. Oh wait, so does Rogue take place before Three? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. I never cared about Rogue. Rogue takes place like 20 years before 3. Like 20 to 30 years before 3 does, yeah. Interesting. Still doesn't even care enough to play it, though. (laughs) (laughs) It's, oh, it's... I never cared about it, so... It was so weird that when it launched, it was only... So this came out in, I want to say... 2014 because it was the year after black flag that was 2013 it was the same year as uh, a unity Unity. yeah so they had unity is like the next gen version and then Mm -hmm. rogue is the current gen one yeah and so if you wanted to play it was weird because so if you have like a next gen console it's like oh here's a significantly worse looking game and it it took them forever to make like a proper next gen version of it so if you wanted to play like a good version of it at the time it was like pretty much PC. Otherwise, you're playing a last gen experience, which is well, kind of like, weird. Keep in mind every story around Assassin's I'm not a fan of the Revolutionary War. I think it's kind of a boring historical time period, which sounds really terrible in the context of things. So I like Assassin's Creed 3 was fine. It was a cool Assassin's Creed story. I just found it kind of boring. So like I didn't really touch anything else related to it. So I'm that's why I never really played Rogue, because I heard it was related to 3. I didn't know when it took place, I just knew it was related, and I'm like, I don't really care about mm. this time period. So I just didn't play it, but I did sadly yeah. play this... Unity. <laughs> I, two, two hey, comments. Unity, Unity's what? fun. I played it when it, it was broken. It, it runs oh, better yeah, now. Never mind, never mind. Then, yeah, yeah. Then that's, that's it, on you, bud. Unity still actually looks yeah, really fucking amazing, all... which is kind mm. of incredible. It also um, helps to re to rebuild the Louvre or to, to the, Louvre. The, the cathedral that burnt down you need yeah. to help like rebuild it which was really cool two quick things uh one this entire discussion has made me realize how much i actually give a shit about this franchise oh yeah uh, which know. i'm surprised by i like, always cared i just miss the old assassin stuff yeah and then uh second thing mm-hmm. is i think we've been talking about assassin's creed for like 30 <laughs> minutes and yeah then, uh, well, sarah joker <laughs> Sarah, too good wanna... for the better move on thank you bye bye <laughs> thank you good night <laughs> sarah you want to go in and get what you've been Speedy up to mediocre i've only played it for the akira yamaoka music which kicks so much ass please let this man compose another silent hill game please just make another silent hill game i'm looking straight into the camera so i can emphasize this please
I just want to play a Silent Hill game that's not a copy of like 16 other games and most I haven't played. Please. And please don't make your game about some heavy-handed topics and handle those heavy-handed topics very, very poorly. I don't know. I don't have much else to say. <laughs> what do you think about like the gaming elements? Like, like aside from what there you described, is no like combat. a sense. There's there no, is combat? no combat. You run from things, and you run very slowly. Is it like, like phasmophobia, where they call their sprint is like going to? to no, I mean, oh god, I don't even know what the fuck the main character's name is. I forgot already. I mean, she runs fast, and it doesn't seem like she gets like tired out. So you can just keep constantly running, which is honestly the only way to play that game because she moves so damn slow. Um, the spirit world stuff is cool. The design of the spirit world, though, makes me very angry because it looks like they looked at Silent Hill, uh, how hell was portrayed in that Constantine movie. <laughs> and then H <laughs> and then HR HR Geiger and was just like, we can we can do this and took the worst elements of everything. And what I mean, worst elements of Geiger was they basically just looked at his art and was like, spooky and made everything weird, spooky and have baby faces on it, which is not how this goes. This is a very important topic. I'm not going to go into more because we'll be here forever. But um, yeah, it's fine. It's really mediocre. Again, I'm a part of me is only playing it because there's that little like pokey thing in my brain going like you just want another Silent Hill. Just like accept this, but hate it at the same time. So that's what I'm doing is I want an, uh, another Silent Hill so goddamn badly that I'm just going to play the medium and beat the medium, but be angry at it the whole time. <laughs> so in terms of gameplay, is it kind of mostly distilled to looking for clues in the other world and then hiding from monsters? So you can find clues in both the other world or you can find clues in both the spirit world and in the normal world. There are only clues you can see in the spirit world and only in the normal. Um, you're not in the spirit world constantly. And I think that's what people need to know going in is you're only in the spirit world when the story demands you be there. You can't toggle between manually. No. no. Uh, you can toggle between walking through just the spirit world because the main character has this like out of out of body experience power where she can like move all of her soul into her like soul in the spirit world and just walk around in there. But you can only do it for like a set amount of time. Uh, looking at both screen hurts. Looking at both screens hurt my eyes really bad. Uh, so when I'm Is playing. I'm really only looking at one and maybe quickly looking at the other because the spirit world is where all of the enemies are or like enemies I've so far met just clouds of moths. It sounds exactly like it would have been really cool on the DS. <laughs> Splitting between the screens. I mean, I guess. it's. Well, I mean, I'm like the concept's cool and it's like, oh, they're running two separate games using the, X, using the Series X's SSD, which is cool. But at the same time, it's it's hard to pay attention to both when the game it's almost making you want to pay attention to both. It's like, Oh, keep looking back and forth. And my eyes just can't do that. So I did, I did get a little bit of eye strain playing for like two hours. Uh, but yeah, the spirit world, you're not in it const constantly. Um, when you, when you say there's eye strain, are you, t are you controlling both elements at the same time? Or is it basically you're focusing yeah. on one or the other? So, so when, so when you press forward on the movement stick, the main character is moving in both the normal world and the spirit oh. world. Yes. So you need to be paying attention to both because there are doors. So like, say I'm walking down a hallway, right? Say I'm walking down a hallway and there's a door in the normal world that's not open, but in the spirit world, it is. So you need to do an out of body experience, which puts this. So like, say my hands cutting through right, right here. So th this side is the spirit world. This side is the human. So if I need to do an out of body experience, the spirit world will take over most of the screen, but still leave a part of the screen where the normal world is because you can't be in the spirit world forever. Like just to be in the spirit world f forever. So there are puzzles that require you to do out of body experiences to get items or to unlock memories or to do puzzles. Um, so you can't go there all the time, only when the story demands that you're in it. Do you but find the one thing this is weird, hold on, I need to bring this up. Cutscenes still happen when there's two screens going on at once. So you'll be you'll be like messing with a physical body in the spirit world. Like she'll be like talking with these characters or like I I interacting with with the spirit. 
when in the normal world she's just fucking with dead air like there's nothing there that's it's weird, weird. Man. it's weird it's super fucking funky like mm -hmm. in uh in terms of using both at the same time would you, um, like, I'm trying to imagine a scenario. I haven't, I haven't seen much of the game. Like, let's say an enemy is chasing you. Are you basically just so focusing on the spirit world any, screen? I haven't met any enemies yet. Um, but if I had to guess, the enemies are going to come from the spirit world because they don't seem to come from the normal one unless they're going to like switch it up on, on 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 me. Yes, I would need to be paying attention to the screen where the enemy's chasing me. But I'm pretty sure the game's also going to make me pay attention to the other screen. Because either something's not going to be open in the, in the spirit world that I need to open in the normal world. So, like, say that in the normal world, there's, like, a garbage bin blocking a door. I need to push that garbage bin out of the way in the normal world for the door to open in the, in the spirit. Okay. So, it's, like, stuff I'm doing in either world is interacting with the other. So, it's, like, the game's forcing you, when it's in the spirit world, it's forcing you to pay attention to both. Which to me has did cause eye strain in, in my first place sitting of it, which was kind of an annoying because I don't because like it's cool that there's two screens and like two different things going on and I like the design of the spirit world again even if it's just hell from Constantine, which <laughs> you just sprinkled a little bit of HR Geiger in there. Um, but is but it, it better than Bowser's Inside Story? I've never played that. <laughs> It's pretty good. It's more biomechanical, but more bio than mechanical. Like, it, it can't tell what it wants to be. Does it want to be Silent Hill? Does it want to be Hell? Does it want to be an H.R. Geiger painting? Like, it's, there's so many different elements in this, in this game that it's weird. Like, it's just, it's plain weird. And the music's fine. Uh, there's actually two composers... In this in this game, there's blooper teams in house composer who does the who does the the normal world music. Then there's Akira Yamaoka who is the Silent Hill composer who also worked on Shadows Shadows of the Damned, who it who is doing the spirit world music. And it's mm -hmm. like when it's not the vocal music, like the one that like Mary Elizabeth McLennan and Troy Baker's in this vocal music too, and he sounds really great. Um, when it's not the vocal music, it's so fucking subtle and it's okay. Like it's fine. It's not his best work, but his best work is obviously the vocal tracks, which I haven't gotten to yet in game, but the soundtrack is on Spotify, so I have listened to them, and they're really fucking good. Awesome. But um, yeah, that's I've been doing that. I've been playing more cyberpunk. Um, please just save me. I want to be done with Cyberpunk. I want to play something else. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the uninstall button. I need to beat it though. Um Oh, what else? Uh you and I are gonna co-op Resident Evil 6, apparently. I'm being forced to do it. He bought it for me. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell I, yeah. Really, I really <laughs> bought it for me, guys. I don't I don't have a choice. That was fair. I mean, that game's tight as hell. I, I, it's fine. It's hey, not my Mesa, favorite. We, we never yeah. finished five. We never finished five. We got to finish uh, five. What else? Uh, uh, oh, I played the Resident Evil 8 demo. Don't think we've talked about that yet. That's great. Um, I, th I think we did. Last, oh, did we? Uh, I don't yeah. know. Dude. We, we had a big over. Resident Evil episode. Uh, my job lets me play video games all day. So I've, I play Fortnite when I'm bored. I'm shit at it. Hell it's fine. Yeah. Do, do you I know started playing floss dance now? Too. Huh? Do you know how to floss dance though? No, because my job hasn't bought any dances. So it's just like the base dances. Oh, um base I played shit. Valorant. Valorant sucks. It's just Overwatch mixed with Counter Strike. It's boring. And I downloaded Kingdom Hearts 2 on our Xbox Series X. So I'm just getting paid to play Kingdom Hearts and it's oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm getting paid to play Kingdom Hearts. Uh right. Oh, that and I'm playing Mirror's Edge on the Series X, too. That game at 60 FPS makes me want to fucking puke. <laughs> and it never a used to do puke, that. A happy puke, though. Huh? A happy puke. No, because also, I don't know what the Series X did, but it fucked with the input on the controls. So I'm thinking I'm I'm making a good jump and I'm splattering on the ground like a fucking fly. So I don't know like, what the Series X did, but it fucked with the controls for that game and it saddens me very much. 
but yeah and other things that i can't talk about but yeah all right <laughs> all right I think that's gonna go ahead and do it for the show yeah we started off pretty mac you're interrupting my my flow i know um <laughs> fuck what was i saying uh we started off very saddy and depressy with some bummer news stories but uh Damn, that Assassin's Creed talks actually got me really fucking hyped. I really want to play Syndicate. I, I'm like, <laughs> like I, 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 I little, missed how dumb the rooks were. They were good beans. I was being a little mopey today, but now I'm just like, yeah, video games are fucking cool. They're fucking yeah. rad, bro. I know. <laughs> video games are cool. I say as Keanu Reeves grabs his crotch right in front of my face. Oh, no. Video games are great. <laughs> Blaine, are you still alive? No, Blaine left. Uh, Blaine left. Oh, I did not. Damn. <laughs> Blaine had to go. Yeah, this is true. We, we still love you, Blaine. Um, but yeah, that's going to go ahead and do it for the show. Um, just as a reminder from the top of the show, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe on all the socials here on Twitch. We stream at 6.30 p.m. PST on Sundays. Uh, you can find the podcast later on podcast services as well as on YouTube as full episodes and individually cut up segments for daily content. And Twitter is the best place to basically keep up to date with all of us. All of our ads are on screen and they're also going to be in the description below. Um. Yeah. Anyone got any closing thoughts? Anything you want to advertise? I have removed the sock. Oh no! Um, Your peas are going to be very p- 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 pronounced. The sock has been removed. Oh no! <laughs> the crabs are gone. No. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. Any closing statements? No. I'm good. Nothing to say. Mace is confident in his words. Yeah. I man. mean Yeah, I Ooh. mean there's not there's not there's that much. <laughs> Resident Evil Resident Evil 6 stream. No. Wait, hold on. Really quick. Ubisoft, what the fuck is up with the design of all these Rainbow Six characters in your in your new comic? Feed Fuse a burger. He's fucking small. <laughs> He's small and it makes me angry. Oh, Sorry, that's, that's right. Crazy. Perfect. Twitter spoiled me. <laughs> what? I just remember Twitter spoiled me. On what? It was under the trending thing. And you know what sucks too? It wasn't it was even like the hashtag that spoiled me. It was the Twitter context for the hashtag that spoiled me. Wait, what are you talking about? I'll, 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 I don't want to say it here. Well, then say <laughs> I don't want to say it on the. Oh, I'll say it after the show, but uh, Twitter spoiled me and I'm sad. <laughs> All right, that's, that's going to do it for the show. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. All right, see you.